from the beginning. Hit it, boys. Welcome to the GRVO Spring Cup. Bring on the heat. Let's go racing. A driver cannot predict nor control is actually the weather. From the beginning. Today, the majority of vehicle manufacturers trust Denso's quality and performance. And since we are one of the largest suppliers of original equipment in the world, chances are good that the vehicles you're servicing already rely on Denso's products to perform at their best. So when a vehicle needs maintenance or repair, choose our aftermarket products for optimum fit, outstanding technical expertise and service. Denso has built a strong sales and service network of more than 10,000 major distributors throughout the world who trust our aftermarket products. Denso's aftermarket products are known for their premium quality. We are one of the few automotive component manufacturers that offers an overall optimum fit in a wide range of vehicles. Our parts integrate seamlessly with modern vehicle electronic systems for better overall performance and precision. Denso creates optimal aftermarket parts that ensure vehicles stay on the road longer and run like new. With vision, creativity and teamwork, we overcome difficulties in development, mass production and quality. Take our Iridium spark plugs one of Denso's world-first innovations with state-of-the-art material. Our engineers were challenged to be the pioneers of the world's thinnest 0.4 millimeter central electrode and developed a new iridium alloy while considering a variety of issues. We combined innovative production processes, like a high-speed automated production line to exactly position the iridium alloy chip on the electrode tip and developed a new 360-degree laser welding method. All of our Iridium spark plugs are manufactured under the same original equipment quality control and subjected to rigorous safety and performance tests to ensure their quality. More than six billion spark plugs have been made. They gained the trust of professionals and are used by major motorsports teams. Just like our extensive line of Iridium plugs, and to meet the need of each region, all of our aftermarket products are designed for better fit and higher performance than most products in the market anywhere in the world. We are proud to support you in providing high quality products that guarantee your customer's satisfaction and reinforce their trust in your service.
GRV or Spring Cup. Bring on the heat. Let's go racing. A driver cannot predict nor control is actually the weather. Toyota Gazoo Racing Velocity 2022 Edition. Josh Ayman right now having a very, very good lead. Sigaraga tries to go for an attack on the inside. He does wrestle a place away. Right behind him. Oh, oh there's going to be a little bit of a bump over there. Oh, there's a little bit of a oh. line around that. Oh. Sigaraga comes in from the inside and he goes into P5. Oh, the way around. Oh, the is in the mix and he gets knocked up. Josh Ayman wins the race. Saya ingin cuba benda yang baru lah untuk challengekan diri sendiri. Iqbal Suji is going to be leading the pack. Greg continues to try to fight but cannot hold on for too long. Oh, oh. someone just hit it on that. That is some solid grip power shot. Wow, Mato Mato keeping himself right on the tail of King Greg. Wow. So Iqbal Suji will be winning this race. It's more of leaving a mark, the motorsport scene. Uzziah is trying to chase down Danny out. The pressure is on. Number four, as we see, ah, oh, a little bit of a bump there right behind him. The penalties is not going to go off. That's going to be a costly mistake. And the Danny coming in from the inside, and there you go. Oh, Danny trying to find inside. He elbows up. Oh, yeah. Danny spun all the way around. Uzziah takes position. He just punted me off, which uh, was very frustrating. He's coming in from the inside, and then you see him getting into P1, and that is fantastic overtaking that. And then off he goes into the checkered flags and Danny wins the race. Your half is now and both him and Chokai Chang having a good start so far. Now Yugendrin is going to be able to get a run out of him on the outside. Can he take Richard back? No, he can't. Right now we can really focus. Oh, oh that's a good oh. one. Oh, he's one out. 
Oh, and there's oh, a oh. little bit of a bump there. And this moment is in P8. He's still oh. being and what happened at the back? So unfortunately, Shamir has to give him the space now. Your half is going alongside, trying to close the door, but Shamir is still able to hang on there. Kawaii Sakana, Shokai Chang, able to take the win. If I want to be a champion, the first thing I have to do is actually beat them. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Toyota Gazoo Racing Velocity Championship 2022. This is Season 5. I'm your host, Nas Rahman. An absolute pleasure to be here. Ah, it's in his fifth year running. Danny Kabada, semi finalist Kita. Are you ready to burn some e Plan, plan, Kayo. Everybody's getting in the zone, ladies and gentlemen. We're coming to you live from One Tama Shopping Centre here in Banda Utama. Centre Court, All Wing, be here or be square. Now, UMW Toyota has brought e-racing to Malaysia since 2018. And this platform has been responsible for many young drivers making the transition to real-life racing on track as well. Now, this season, Season 5 began in July. Over 400 racers came to participate. And of course, fast forward today, August. This is the semi-finals. Tomorrow is the grand finals. And it's down to the final 20, ladies and gentlemen, who will be bringing home 20,000 ringgit and a chance to represent Malaysia on the virtual world stage. We'll find out soon enough. Thank you to our sponsors, Toyo Tires, uh, NK, Denso, Modelista, Motis, Drive M7, and Toyota Capital. Without our sponsors, this uh, event will definitely not be a success. So we're coming to you live. Kepada anda yang sedang menonton di rumah, yang sedang menonton di Facebook dan juga YouTube, setia bersama kita untuk keempat-empat race yang akan diadakan pada hari ini. And those of you who are living nearby Bandar Utama, what else for you to do this weekend? Come on over to Wan Utama and watch these guys race live. It's been a long, long time since we've had the opportunity to actually have an event right here on ground for everybody to watch. So take this opportunity to bring your family around, especially if all of you guys are racing fans and you can try your hand at the uh, time attack sessions that we have here today. There's been a time set by the ambassador of Toyota Gazoo Racing, Tengku Jan Le. And if you can beat his time right here, within four laps, you will stand to win exclusive merchandise from Toyota Gazoo Racing. So, apa nak buat hujung minggu ini? Jom kita race lah, e-racing. And uh, speaking of commentators, I know many racing events where commentators go, oh, it's a beautiful day for racing, kan? Ah, but as far as e-racing is concerned, it doesn't matter what kind of weather we have, rain or shine, it's ready to race. And so, it's on to our commentators, Victor Cax and Matthews Isaac. It's over to you guys. Alright, thank you so much Nas. Selamat datang dan selamat kembali ke Toyota Gazoo Racing Velocity Esports Championship 2022. Anda bersama saya, Matthews Isaac, selaku pengulas rasmi anda yang akan mengulas dalam bahasa Melayu. And we have Victor Ang who will be bringing you all the actions in English. How are you doing, Victor? I'm doing good. I'm so excited to get started here because we are finally able to have it on ground. After yeah, having to skip last year, th thanks to some unfortunate circumstances due to the pandemic, now we're finally able to have this race on ground here. We have all the racers here live and the, the environment here, my goodness, it is definitely heating up. Yeah, it's starting up. It's definitely heating up. So, we have all the 40 drivers di dalam quarterfinal. Mm. Uh, but only 20 made it la Victor. Eh? But that yeah. was some race in the quarterfinals. Oh yeah, it was really competitive even from the quarterfinals going onwards. I mean, uh, all our heavy hitters like Taj Izrin, uh, Mohamed Iqbal, Chong Kai Chang, Mio Muhammad. I mean, they all put themselves really on top of the board when it came to their respective groups when it came into the quarterfinals itself. But of course, only the top five of each group was able to make it here. So that leads us now to our top 20 coming here for the semi-finals. All right, so jom kita lihat the top 20 drivers yang berada di dalam semi-finals. 
Yeah, so these are our two groups. We are going to be starting the day off with Group A. That's going to be comprised of Taj Izrin, Nofaris Ban, uh, Chandra Mauli, Kira Lam, Ahmad Siddiq, Danish Bigaswaran, Muhammad Uzair, Ryo Pandukusuma, Harish Shami, and Muhammad Kamal bin Muhammad Ali. So Taj Ayman, of course, he's coming in as the two-time champion yep. for the Velocity Championships. And uh, he's going to be seeing if he can try to defend it one more time here. But definitely with some uh, new faces in the mix, as well as a lot of very veteran drivers here, he's sure to have a, quite a challenge here in this group, isn't he? Yeah, this championship is wide open there, Victor. So into Group B, we see in uh, uh, in the first position, we see Mohamed Iqbal, uh, Goyi Ying, Itzam Atli, Putra Azvira, Akil Saufi, Chong Kai Chan, Mior, Mohamed Hafiz, Fakrul Shamir, Mohamed Hakim bin Swaimi, Mohamed Juwaidi bin Mohamed Johari. So this is the Group B. We saw all the actions in Group B. The Group B was absolutely fantastic, man. But I'm really looking forward for these semifinals. Yeah, I'm glad to see that we're also having a lot of representation from other states besides Slango. Of course, predominantly most of our top 20 here are from this state, but we also have representatives from uh, Kedah. No Farisman is from Kedah. Fakrul, he's from uh, Pahang. And then Mohamed Hakim, he's from Negeri Sembilan. So it's great to see that we're having a lot of representation from other states as well. This really goes to show that these are the top 20 Malaysian drivers here in Gran Turismo Sport. Yeah, so talking about top 20, we'll be introducing them. So Nas, take it away, my man. Thank you very much, Victor. Thank you very much, man. I'm so glad that you guys are with us. You guys have been with us from the start, from the preliminaries to the quarterfinals, and now it's semi-final time. Ladies and gentlemen, 20 semi-finalists, 10 grand final spots. And so, our 20 finalists, as uh, said by Victor and Matthew, our commentators today, they've been split into two groups, Group A and Group B, and we're ready to start. Group A semi-finals right here, right now. So ladies and gentlemen, those of you who are here on ground and also those of you online, cheer for your favourite drivers. Let's invite our first driver, two-time champion, Taj Isrin Ayman. Our next driver. All the way from Slangom, Noor Farisman bin Norde. Alama e, ingatkan Slangom rupanya orang Kedah eh, orang Tara datang dari jauh untuk racing bersama-sama dengan kita. We move on to our third driver. This guy is from Slangom. Put your hands together for Chandra Mauli Anandan. To your sim, to your sim, driver. Our next driver, put your hands together for Kira Lam Kok Hong, also from Slago. Next driver, Habibi Yamaulana, put your hands together for Ahmad Asidi from Slago. Introducing our first competitor from Wilayah Persekutuan Kuala Lumpur is Tanish Weakness Warren. Thank you, Tanish. Off to your machine. Our next driver is the champion of season one. Put your hands together for Muhammad Uzay. Our next driver, also a contender, getting a credible finish in last year's Velocity Championship. Put your hands together for Rio Bernukusuma! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our ninth driver, please welcome from Slango, Haris Shami Ben Mutase. Our final driver, driver number 10, all the way from Nogo East Milan. Put your hands together for Muhammad Kamal bin Muhammad Ali. First time lost the semi finalists. There you are, ladies and gentlemen, our 10 drivers for Group A, our 10 semi finalists. Gentlemen, start your virtual endings. It's now back to your commentators, Victor Cax and Matthew Isaac. Over to you guys. Alright, so itu dia kita lihat segala 
uh, semi-finalists di dalam group A. So man, I'm really looking forward to this, Victor. Oh yeah, we're going to be having a look at our first race for today. So let's go ahead and let you guys know how this is going to turn out. So race number one is going to be a uh, basically a five minute qualifying into a 15 minute sprint race. So what that means is that the first five minutes is going to be given to the players, uh, to the drivers in order to set their fastest time. And then the times will determine their starting positions on the grid when it comes to the race. Now this 15 minute sprint race uh, will be providing the first First bulk of points here as you can see uh, the points start at 25 points for the first place and it goes all the way down to only a single point if you finish in 10th place and uh, those of you guys who are f1 fans out there who recognize that this is uh -huh. very similar to the f1 points system when it comes to their championship all right so jom kita lihat untuk race yang kedua uh, so this is going to be 30 minutes reverse grid man same point format yang kita lihat daripada apa Victor mengatakan tadi but of course it's going to be 30 minutes uh, race tire wear is going to be ballot fuel consumption ballot it's going to be tire rating also from ballot but man I'm really really excited to see this race too man yeah so what it means by reverse grid is that the finishing order of that first race will determine the starting order for the second race here and uh, because it's reverse grid so basically if, if you win that first race you're going to be starting in last place so it's all reverse it's all grid about races <laughs> yeah, it's, it definitely gives you a, a challenge there, especially if you're at the top. It's going to be about how many overtakes you can make during a race. But then especially for those guys at the back, this is an opportunity for them to try to make up uh, some points here. And given that these two races cumulatively will determine, uh, you know, a lot of points here, especially going to races three and four, you know, absolutely every single race is still very important. Absolutely. So let's have a look on the track setup. And uh, let's see what's going to be happening for the track setup. I'm really looking forward to this as well because we know uh, we're going to be using different track this time. It's going to be Brands Hatch and this is a classic uh, track, of course. I think Victor can run it through a little bit on this. Yeah, Brands Hatch. I mean, again, this is a legendary track. Back in the 70s, it used to be the British Grand Prix. These days, though, it's been used a lot for GT racing. It's used for club racing as well. Uh, we're going to be using the Grand Prix layout. So that's the full size layout of Brands Hatch itself. Still a relatively short track, but with plenty of uh, British racing legends uh, adorning the names of every single corner here on this track. You can be guaranteed that these drivers here want to put up a show. Yeah, definitely. So let's have a look on the car setup that will be coming up very, very shortly. And yeah, there you go, man. We will be using the Toyota. Aha. Get S running through over here. S yeah, F R. S F R. So what this car is is basically a tiny car, quite light as well, it's standing in at 1.1 tons, but it's carrying a lot of power under that hood there. 349 brake horsepower, 448 newton meters of torque. So even though it may be slightly small and lighter compared to a GT86, it's a little bit uh, faster, more powerful compared to that. So it's certainly going to be quite uh, the car to use actually, uh, especially on a track like Brands Hatch, which were heavily favored these yeah, small yeah, yeah. and very nimble little machines. I mean, I really like the shape of it and <laughs> having it in Brands Hatch, this is going to be iconic to watch, man. So, yep, let's have a look on the prize pool that's going to be coming up very, very soon on... All right, so there you go. Yep. This is the car setup. So, let's go on the prize pool. How much they'll be taking away. Man, this is massive, Victor. Absolutely <laughs> massive. So, the first place is bringing home 20,000, man. 20,000 ringgit. I mean, that's a lot of money. And it's no surprise that, you know, the Velocity Championship has been consistently yeah. one of the most competitive uh, e-racing tournaments here in Malaysia, just simply of the size of this prize pool here. Now, naturally, uh, with, the, with the total prize pool being uh, this huge, uh, every single person who has participated, every basically everyone in the top 20 stands a chance to win some kind of cash prize. Only determination that we're going to be uh, kind of like running through this weekend to see who's going to be able to get that lion's share of the prize pool there. So first place, 20,000. Second place, you still get 10,000. Third place, you still get 7,000. I mean, what can you even do with 7,000 ringgit? I mean, not only that, tempat empat ni, mereka akan membawa RM 5,500. Tempat kelima, 4,500. Tempat keenam, 4,000. Tempat ketujuh, 3,500. Tempat kelapan, 3,000 ringgit. Tempat kesembilan, 2,000 500. Tempat ke-10, 2,000. Dan daripada tempat 11, ke-20, RM500, man! 
it's like you're guaranteed something over here, man. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> as long as you're able to fight yeah. for positions, as long as you're able to put yourself a little bit higher, that means more money coming into your bank there. I mean, what's not to like when it comes to this tournament here, man? But yeah, we're going to be jumping into our semifinals race uh, one very, very soon. And given that the drivers are going to be quite angsty to get it started, because you got to remember, last year we had to run uh, this uh, the, the season, uh, the 2021 season, uh, basically remotely. So a lot of these drivers here, they had to compete inside the comfort of their own homes. Now, because we're having it on ground, that means they all have to be present right here in person to race this. Uh, and that also means that uh, across the board, all the equipment is going to be similar. It's going to be much more of a spec kind of like uh, uh, system enough. here for our <laughs> sim drivers. Yeah, so saya pun sangat teruju nak tengok bagaimana mereka ni akan uh, menunjukkan segala aksi di atas litar virtual sebenarnya. Especially in Grand uh, Hatch, but yeah, Grand Hatch, but yes, I'm really looking forward to this now. Yeah, so in any case, uh, when it comes to the actual race itself, because, you know, even in the, during the qualifiers, it was a little bit of an interesting kind of like a series of races there, because, of course, uh, when we f uh, first did the uh, quarterfinals, we used the most recent version of Gran Turismo, which is Gran Turismo 7. Uh, as you can see from some of the highlights, you know, it wasn't exactly the smoothest of uh, experiences, but they still, nevertheless, though, brought us quite a lot of racing action through there because it's still uh, everyone is just vying to get into this spot here I mean uh, we, when we have people who have been you know competing in this uh, velocity championship since the very first one I mean we literally have the first champion uh, Momo Uzair coming back here and you know a lot of uh, attention has been really been put on our two-time champion which is yep. Taj Isrin but uh, Momo Uzair he won the first velocity uh, championship and since then has been trying to you know uh, trying to get himself back up to that top spot again so given that he's one of the uh, older like the uh, most experienced sim drivers out there this is kind of like a redemption run for him in a sense to show that you know he still has what it takes you know to come against some of these uh, new top guys like Taj Israel or uh, Iqbal Suji you know these younger guys now are starting to bring uh, more challenges to the veteran drivers so they really need to be on top of their game if they want to be able to stay on the top step of the podium yeah benar tu. so nampaknya semi final Finalis kita di dalam Group A uh, will be going in very very soon. But tetapi at this very moment, siapakah yang akan menjadi pemenang yang akan masuk ke dalam Grand Final? Hanya lima ya. Eh? There will only be five races. We'll be going into the grand finals. Basically, for each group, yeah. yeah. So uh, the five, uh, the five, the top five in each group, uh, when you count the points after all the races, there, those will be the ones who get into the grand finals here. So you can expect that you know the first race, uh, even though like uh, it is uh, literally everyone starts from zero points, right? But then the first, the first race itself, most people think that it's going to be an opportunity to take things kind of lighthearted or like rather casual. But no, for these guys, every single race is important. Every single win they can get here is already like an extra guarantee it's like literally half the work done if you win that first race already you see so yeah. for these uh, top uh, for our top 10 drivers here in group A you know they're all going to be vying for that uh, top spot if once they're able to get into that the job becomes a lot easier from that point on but really uh, when it comes to those who are finishing like somewhere in the middle of the pack like say 5th uh, place 6th place those guys have to be a little bit more careful because like if they aren't able to match the same performance here in the next race itself that could uh, severely hamper the chances of getting into the grand final. So you expect things are going to be pretty much heating up, you know, starting from the first race onwards. Alright, definitely. So kalau kita lihat di dalam Group A, seperti yang kita pun sudah announce sebenarnya, tadi Nas already called out all the races. Taj Izrin, we have Nur Farisman, Chandra Mauli, Kiralam Kokung, uh, Ahmad Siddiq, Danish Bigneswaran, Mohamad Uzair, Rio, uh, Haris Shami dan juga Muhammad Kamal. So siapakah yang akan memenangi race ini? Kita tunggu dan lihat. Saya pun dah sedia, Abang Nas pun dah sedia, Victor pun dah sedia. We are going to go into the race very, very soon. Yeah, well, we have the racers uh, up on the screen here. I want to kind of like uh, give a few highlights of some of these drivers here. Of course, Dutch Israel, he is the two-time uh, returning champion. This year, he's going to try to defend his two-time championship. Uh, drivers such as, uh, I see like a very interesting uh, dichotomy where, you know, we have one of the oldest competitors here, Kirill Lam Kok Hong.
Wong. He's 36 years old this year. He's been racing, uh, pretty much doing sim racing since 1997. That's 25 years of experience he's had. And the funny thing is that we have drivers here who are 17 years old. Nor Faritzman, he's uh, literally is still a teenager. We also have young, young drivers like Danish, who is only 21 years old. Can you imagine Kira literally has been driving sims much longer than any of these drivers have been alive? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, 1997. Yeah. yeah, 1997. So man, that is some experience. Tetapi, it's all about who's going to win the race today, man. So yeah. kita pun sangat terjun nak tengok what is going to be happening di dalam 10 uh, penumpang kita di dalam semi-final Group A. So kita akan mulakan our, call, uh, our qualifying start lama lagi. But yes, lots of expectations, uh, lots of uh, speculations yang mereka pun sudah mengatakan di dalam interview, Victor. We had it from Danish, we had it from Zaire, we had it from Taji Zrain, but yes, it, I mean, we can say whatever we want, but at the end of the day, it's you proving yourself on the track. Yeah, I mean, you got to put your money where your mouth is, right? And, you know, considering that a lot of these guys, you know, uh, have been competing, I mean, especially for the, the veterans who've been uh, literally doing sim racing for years, you know, they had also been uh, holding their skills in other, like, uh, sim racing games here. So, but the thing is that for the, uh, particularly for the guys who have been uh, champions of this Velocity Championship in the past, those guys have been pretty much experts when it comes to Gran Turismo specifically. So, it'd be kind of interesting to see, you know, how that turns out, you know, are the kind of like Jack Fall traits, uh, Master of None when it comes to yep. these sim platforms going to do better, or are the experts, the very experts when it comes to uh, these uh, this game here, are they the ones who are going to dominate? Well, we're about to find out. All right, so tonton dan puan, ini adalah semifinals Group A dan kita sekarang ni berada di dalam qualifying. So kita tunggu dan lihat who is going to be getting the best time out of this. So kita bersama dengan Touch Aiman yang kini berada di dalam P keempat. But yes, at this moment, the uh, numbers don't really matter it's all about you hitting the best timing right now yeah so five minutes in total for them to go out and set the best time and given brands hatch is such a small track basically it takes about one minute uh 10 one minute 13 maybe on these cars uh they already try to get around here so we'll see uh yeah basically based on that uh, you know that there's going to be plenty of like flying laps these guys can do especially if they are, are able to keep these uh, laps chained together very very smoothly uh, I do want to note that uh, what the uh, tire uh, and fuel settings are for this uh, first spin race here uh, right now we're going to be racing at dusk that's at uh, 21 hours here uh, the tire rating is set at two times the simulation rate so is the tires going to degrade about two times faster than real life uh, fuel is set at 1x so what this tells me is that this is actually a really good setting for for them to kind of like start the first race off because with the tire degradation even though it's at 2x it's actually relatively a low degradation especially for a game like Gran Turismo so I'm expecting that they're going to be able to push the tires a little bit more uh, on this race here compared to uh, the, the later race they will have in the in the feature so that means that this is going to be a really good opportunity for the really aggressive the really uh, the, the really high attack drivers to go ahead and try to make up good position especially at the start and they don't have to worry too much about maintaining the fuel because again fuel at 1x means that pretty much they can go full tank all the way uh, there's no mandatory pit stop I believe for the sprint race because it's only going to be 15 minutes from start to finish so that means that they're going to be pretty much given free reign to push the tires as hard as they want uh, don't have to worry about running out of fuel it's going to be all about how aggressively they can drive on that track yeah pushing is all we need today so nampaknya ini adalah di dalam uh, kita masih berada di dalam qualifying uh, kita mempunyai lebih kurang dalam satu minit lebih saja. But yes, looking at how things have been going, one thing I really like about this track, Victor, is the high speed corners. <laughs> <laughs> Not just a high speed corners for me. Like Brands Hatch is very much like a like if a racetrack or rather if a roller coaster was turned into a racetrack, it probably looks something like Brands Hatch. So many uh, changes in altitude, uh, so many like fast corners, and especially like after we got through the first uh, section here in Brands Hatch, the second sector is full of extremely high speed sweeping corners. So you know you're going to be pushing uh, your car pretty much to the edge of grip, especially on some of these uh, corners here so you pretty much got to be very very much in tune with the car itself and how it's going to uh, react basically whenever you put it in that kind of situation so with the SFR being uh, very very uh, small and light you can expect it to be quite nimble especially in the slower sections on the track but then the extra power that's going and the uh, extra downforce because of the huge huge wing on the front and the, the wings in, uh, in the back 
that pretty much gives it a lot of grip and a lot of downforce to use during the faster uh, sections of this track. So it's definitely going to be a very fun car to drive, actually, if you have the opportunity <laughs> to do so on this track. So, But then for these guys, it's all going to be putting on the be best game face here because they're already trying to set their fastest times here. In fact, uh, if you look at the leaderboard right now, Uzair, he's currently holding the provisional pole in front of our defending champion here, Taj Ayman. So perhaps the uh, first shot in uh, this war that's going to be unfolding between the two drivers here? Ah, most likely. We never know. <laughs> ah, season after season, kita dah lihat dah big time. Most of the time, we see Uzair up against Taj Ayman. Danish Weakness Warden now joining the pack as well in uh, P3 for now. But yes, the... I mean, you still can't count out the rest of the other races. Anyone can surprise us. Yeah. That's for sure. Again, like, uh, you know, qualifying to, to, is only going to be able to determine a great position, but uh, given that uh, this is going to be a sprint race, you know, making up positions at the start is going to be absolutely important here. Nevertheless, ladies and gentlemen, our qualifying session is just about ended. Uzair still maintains provisional pole, but can anyone else grasp it away from him? Touch Ayman, uh, we're riding aboard with him right now. He's coming through in the second sector, and uh, with the checker flag already out on the start line, this means that this is pretty much the last lap for him here in order to set his fastest time but he needs to be able to get to the end there within the next minute if he doesn't make it to the end there unfortunately the lap time here is not going to count so it's a little bit of a race for these guys you know a race to try to figure out uh, how much faster can they uh, increase or uh, uh, basically uh, improve on their lap time but also a race to get to that finish line before the timer runs out I won't lie to you I like the car <laughs> Oh, yeah. It's, it's... I really love the car, man. It, it's like it fits so well in Brands Hatch, of course. I mean, most of the time we have seen bulky cars in Brands Hatch. Man, I kind of feel like I jump some bits again. Mm -hmm. But over here, it looks fabulous, man. Yes, yeah, it's, it's extremely tiny. So you can expect a lot of these guys to take advantage of that when it comes to overtaking. I wouldn't be surprised to see a lot of three wides here. I mean, we even see a lot of like uh, guys going three wide through wow. uh, corners here when it comes to the, uh, the quarterfinals. So I don't expect, uh, I, I mean, I expect that semifinals will be pre pretty much the same. <laughs> Alright, so tuan-tuan dan puan-puan, kita akan masuk ke dalam race tak lama lagi. So, kita tunggu dah lihat who is going to be winning this race. Kita dah lihat dah segala uh, position untuk semua para pelumba kita. Uzair, Taj Aiman, uh, Danish Weakness Warren di P ketiga and so far so on. But yes, this is going to be a very important moment right now, Victor. Yeah, three seconds to the start here. It's going to be a standing start and what a start it is so far. Look at the way Uzair is going, smoking his tires out. Trying to make sure that he stays in front of Touch Ayman coming through his first turn. But look at that. They're already piling together for this first one. And look at this. Such a long, long drop to the bottom. And then finally coming all the way up here to take the hairpin at Druids. Breaking quite hard here is uh, Kira Lam. He's trying to follow behind Danish. And that's actually going to be able to get him one place up here. He's still trying to battle against Kamal Ali as he comes down towards Graham Hill Ben. But Kira Lam tucks in behind. Still stays in fifth position so far. Keeping it nice and tidy. Now they're going to be coming to Surtees. A very very, very tricky corner and very, very slow as well. It can feel like oh, practically forever as you wait for the corner to finally open up and you can finally put pedal to the metal and open up that gas. Yeah, so kita terus saja ke dalam seleko yang kelima on board kita bersama dengan Lam sebenarnya. Itu Kira Lam dan beliau masih lagi berada di belakang uh, Kamal Ali and let's see if he's able to overtake ataupun mempunyai uh, peluang untuk meminta. Tetapi so far so good untuk segala top 5 dan ini dia masih lagi kita lihat Kamal Ali Cuba untuk mempertahankan uh, posisi beliau dan tidak memberikannya kepada pelumba yang lain. Although he's coming closer and closer, Vita just waiting for the move. Yeah, he's going to wait for the right moment to do so. But the but good thing now is that he's just basically towing off of the draft uh, from the uh, disruption, the air that uh, Kamal Ali is providing in, as a car in front of him. So he just pretty much needs to bide his time and then find a good place on the track to try to overtake. Maybe on the pit straight here, which is a very, very long sprint all the way until the first quarter. Corner. So this could be a good opportunity for Kiralam to do maybe some movements, but it hasn't quite closed the gap though. So unfortunately, it's come down to his first turn. He still is stuck in fifth place. It should be interesting to note as well that for the guys in the front, Uzair is already pulling a, a rather sizable lead now ahead of Touch Ayman, but seems like he's not really requiring to push too hard there. <laughs> he's already leading the race here. 
Ya, masih lagi awal sebenarnya di dalam uh, perlumbaan kita. Muhammad Uzair berada di dalam P yang pertama diikuti oleh Taj Aiman di dalam P kedua. P ketiga adalah Danix Witness Warren. P kelima Kamal Ali dan P kelima adalah Kira Lambat. So far, I see Muhammad Uzair nampaknya kesorangan di hadapan. Tiada mempunyai uh, any sorts of pressure datang daripada belakang. But I'm very sure Taj Aiman, one of the most talented uh, racers yang kita pernah lihat sebenarnya. Dan beliau akan memberikan sedikit tekanan kepada Uzair. But of course, Having touch Ayman right behind you is not a good thing sometimes. Yeah, Uzair Most went, of the time. <laughs> yeah. Uzair just now went a little bit onto the uh, the sand trap uh, as he came out the exit of that turn there. So hopefully it hasn't eaten too much into the time. It's already lost about two tenths now compared to touch Ayman. So touch now, I think he's going to have some good drafting uh, to do here as we come up towards the uh, final sector here on Brands Hatch. And you can see touch Ayman basically uh, using every last inch of that trap. Practically he's dipping a couple of these tires off of the the track into the grass there so they can take a much wider line to the exit here because he really wants to be able to carry that speed in order to catch up the Uzair by the time he gets to the first turn. Unfortunately, he doesn't seem to have been able to make up the gap though because Uzair has been able to add another uh, 110 to his time now. So that's still maintaining a healthy lead in front of Dutch Ayman and certainly going to allow Uzair a bit more breathing room now to defend his pole position. Yeah, kita terus saja di dalam Sleko yang ketiga. Tiada perubahan yang drastik yang kita melihat lihat di dalam Perlumbaan so far Nampaknya ada gap Antara P1 Hingga P ke 5 sebenarnya So Things might change later on But at this moment It's all about you Getting closer and closer Towards your opponent In the front Over at the back Kita lihat di dalam P ke 5 Adalah Lam P ke 6 Adalah Rio P ke 7 Farisman P ke 8 Adalah Sidik And adakah kita akan lihat Rio melakukan a Move uh, Terhadap uh, Di hadapan Aitu Lam Tetapi nampaknya uh, Ruang itu pun telah ditutup rapat Oleh Lam so far Yeah, it's looked like uh, Kira Lam early on had been chasing quite close to Kamal Ali, but now the gap's gone up to 1.7, and I wonder if that uh, due to some driving mistakes or perhaps a, a force a slowdown there. But whichever the case, though, this is now giving Rio a perfect opportunity here to attack for fifth place, and this is going to be quite crucial, especially when it comes to the championship points. Remember, uh, the top five oh, no. the points are going to be the ones to get through, so Rio is going to be absolutely using this opportunity now to try to get some points off of Kira Lam, but unfortunately he gets blocked before the final corner here at Jim Clark and he's attempting to try to find around the inside and he does find the speed he does find a position he just needs to keep himself in front of Kira Lam by that first turn can he do it though coming to breaking point Rio blocks the door keeps Kira Lam behind takes it up into P5 yeah satu gerakan yang sangat baik daripada Kira Lam sekarang ni tetapi Rio yang memintas beliau tetapi Kira Lam masih lagi cuba untuk mengikuti beliau daripada belakang dan ini adalah battle untuk P kelima sekarang ni antara Kira Lam dan juga Rio and let's see if things are going to change di dalam Sleko yang keempat yang akan datang sekarang ni nampaknya Lam sudah pun berada di dalam garisan yang luar yeah. tetapi bagaimana sekarang ni tetapi masih lagi ditutup rapat oleh Rio sekarang ni tidak memberikan segala peluang and Rio melakukan dengan cukup baik and make sure nampaknya Lam tidak mempunyai peluang untuk memintas ya yeah, Kira actually tried to go for the dive there but it seems like Rio was happen. able to uh, maintain some good speed through Surtees there so he managed to get a much better exit out there compared to Kira, so that's allowing him a lot more gap now, three tenths of a second ahead of Kira Lam at the moment, so Kira is just going to have to tuck in behind, still uh, carry on that toe, but then it's going to be quite crucial by the time we get at a pit straight though, because remember, that's where Rio Mesh made the pass on Kira Lam, and with Kira still sticking so close to the behind, uh, he's certainly going to be able to get a good draft, he just needs to get a good exit off of Jim Clark, and that will allow him the speed, the momentum required in order to make the pass, so let's see is going to be able to do it this time though because they are coming up to the pit straight now it's going to be full gas ahead until they get onto that breaking point for the first turn so Kira Lam tries to go for a little look on the inside can't quite find it he's going to try to outbreak him but Rio still keeps the door closed still keeps himself on the racing line making it impossible for Kira Lam to be able to make it through Kira Lam tries to have a look on the inside going to do it but again had to break a little bit too early here because Rio blocks him up before he's going to be able to make the move so brilliant defending coming here from our fifth place man. Yeah, apa yang saya sangat suka daripada Rio adalah gerakan beliau untuk menafikan gerakan-gerakan daripada Kira Lam. But I'm very sure Kira Lam tidak akan memutus asa sebenarnya. Beliau cuba untuk uh, mengejar balik Rio sekarang ni tetapi nampaknya gap tu sudah pun terbuka antara uh, Rio dan juga Kira Lam. But at this moment Taj Aiman masih lagi cuba untuk mengejar Uzair 
Kadir yang berada di dalam P yang pertama. Kita terus saja di dalam Sleko yang keenam dan Uzair masih lagi berada di hadapan dengan agak selesa sebenarnya but of course uh, pressure itu akan datang juga because you're having the former champion di belakang anda. So let's see how he's able to do something. Oh, nampaknya oh. kira lam. Nampaknya tidak dapat. Oh, he just went past Kamal Ali if I got that right because the camera just pan at the same moment there. But let's see if Kiralam is able to make a move uh, towards Rio at this moment, man. Yeah, Kamal has dropped a couple of places there. So that's given uh, Rio now fourth place and yeah. Kiralam himself fifth place. I wonder what happened to Kamal Ali uh, just early on. It happened a little bit off camera there. So unfortunately, couldn't quite see what exactly caused him to slow down that much. But uh, for Kiralam, this is actually going to be a bit of a relief now because even though he's not, uh, even if he's not going to be able to pass Rio, at least he's still in that competent fifth position there. So uh, right now it's going to be up to Kamal Ali to see if he can uh, make up some time because we all, we're already about halfway through our race here. Seven minutes to go in race number one. So past this halfway point here, there's not going to be a lot of time left for them to try to make up some good places. Yeah, full focus kita lihat di dalam uh, kelihatan uh, Tash Ayman sebenarnya. And let's see if he's able to uh, close down the gap. So far kita lihat Uzair masih lagi berada di hadapan dan beliau adalah pelumba yang terpantas so far dengan 1.28.3. 3-4. That's the fastest lap yang dipegang oleh Muhammad Uzair. So, Muhammad Uzair masih lagi berada di dalam P yang pertama. Dan P kedua adalah Taj Aiman. P ketiga, Danish Witness Warren. Rio sekarang ni berada di dalam P keempat. Let's see if he's able to challenge Danish Witness Warren yang berada di dalam P ketiga. Tetapi Taj Aiman nampaknya sudah pun memiliki sedikit advantage daripada sini. And it's all a matter of time until siapa yang melakukan kesilapan. Especially late breaking. Yeah, the gap seems to be yo-yoing a lot between yeah. Uzair and Taj Ayman. I mean, at certain points that Taj seems to be able to gain some time now, but Uzair seems to be able to get it back after that first sector. Uh, at the moment, though, Taj is catching up to Uzair, so maybe he, he could be in a good spot here to perhaps make a last lap pass. Oh, he's definitely he getting now. within good range now, especially after the first turn. He's going to have a look at the inside coming through Druids, but decides against it. Not quite uh, going for the move yet. Tucks in behind Uzair. This is a very slow section, of course, after Druid, so, so it's going to be very crucial for these guys to keep themselves in control of their car throughout this part. Eating out tonight onto the curb there, they want to gain maximum exit speed, and then now breaking very, very gently uh, into Surtees, making sure they stay on that racing line there, both of them keeping it nose to tail here. Still about six tenths of a second behind here with Touch Ayman, he's losing time compared to Zyre, so now Zyre is going to be able to use this back stretch, uh, back stretch in order to get himself a little bit more Head. Ya, dan kita mempunyai lebih kurang 5 minit saja yang berbaki di dalam race ini. Taj Aiman masih lagi mengikuti Uzair yang berada di dalam P yang pertama. And uh, so far seperti apa? Victor mengatakan nampaknya gap itu dah macam yo-yo dah. Kadang-kadang it's a buff and sometimes it's closer. But let's see if there is some sort of a mistake daripada Muhammad Uzair sekarang ni. But Muhammad Uzair masih lagi tenang di hadapan. Composure at its finest. That is what you can say for Muhammad Uzair in the last five minutes of the race. I'd love to see what is a lap comparison between yeah. Touch and Uzair because right now Uzair, his fastest time is 110 faster than whatever Touch Ayman is able to do. So the fact that he's still able to keep such good pace in front of, uh, remember, a two-time uh, returning champion here is, is in itself a very impressive feat here. I mean, remember, all these cars are similar in the power to weight ratio in their setup as well. So the only differential is really these uh, two drivers' uh, capabilities behind the wheel. And given that they're just that close, in terms of fastest lap here, it just goes to show uh, how similar uh, in skill level both of these expert drivers are. Kiralam now, he's having a look around the outside of Rio as we cut to Druids here. It looked like he almost had him uh, on the exit, but Rio was able to close the door just in time and now it's given him a bit of a gap now to defend as we come towards Surtees. Uh, Kama Ali is still hanging around behind there, but he's still about one second off of Kiralam, so still a lot of uh, time to make up here before he's going to be able to join this battle, but it looks like Kira Lam was, is still catching uh, Rio, especially off of the main straight there. So perhaps that's going to be the main place that Rio needs to focus on, especially when it comes to his defense. Yeah, the battle of P5 ni nampaknya belum lagi tamat sebenarnya, Victor. Ha, it's still wide open antara Kamal Ali, uh, Kira Lam dan juga Rio at this moment. And let's see if there is someone that is going to be surprising us at this moment. Dengan kita, kita lihat, uh, Lam masih lagi berada di hadapan. Di dalam P ke-5, Rio berada di dalam P ke-4 yang diikuti oleh Kamal Ali di dalam P ke-6. So, let's see. He's 
if these racers are able to change their positions in time di dalam 3 minit saja yang berbaki so far so kita on board bersama dengan Kiralam sekarang ni terus saja di dalam Sleko yang ke-9 Rio masih lagi memegang uh, posisi beliau di hadapan di dalam P keempat tidak memberikan sedikit peluang juga kepada Kiralam tetapi this long straight terus saja di dalam Sleko yang pertama dan nampaknya Rio oh masih lagi menutup saja segala ruang tiada ruang di situ untuk Kiralam and Kiralam masih lagi menunggu for that one opportunity there Victor yeah but he needs that speed differential is just not coming for him yet though he's gotten close quite a few times but every time he's thinking about making that move Rio still closes the door and him forces him to back up a little bit and that's just buying a lot of time now for a fourth place man I mean Rio remember he's no slouch when he comes to these competitions I mean he took third place back in 2020 of the uh, Velocity Championship so he knows how to race when it comes to graduate reserve even though Kiralam has many yep. like two, practically two decades of experience here he is having a heck of a time using every last bit of his skill here in order to try to find a way past Rio and still keeping pace with him all throughout this battle yeah kurang daripada 2 minit saja yang berbaki di dalam race ini masih lagi di dalam P pertama Uzair dan P kedua adalah Taj Aiman can we see a change di dalam P1 dan juga P2 masih lagi terbuka sebenarnya Taj Aiman still holding on there cuba untuk uh, mengikuti Uzair ataupun cuba untuk memintas menunggu saja kesilapan daripada Uzair but Uzair has been so so calm composure yang sangat-sangat berkualiti daripada beliau yang masih lagi meletakkan beliau di hadapan so that is the uh, entire teori yang kita boleh bagi tentang Uzair so far but there is no drastic changes from P1 to P5 at this moment Victor uh, the things, that, things have been settled I think even still even since the early stages of this yep. race now so it's all about maintenance and especially for the guys in the lead like Uzair like it's really about him just maintaining a consistent pace now ahead of Taj Aiman and as long as he doesn't make any slip-ups as long as he doesn't uh, cut the track too much doesn't incur penalties or uh, doesn't lose control it seems quite unlikely that Taj is going to be able to find a way past him even when the gap is uh, constantly uh, shifting you know over the course even a single lap here between these two guys but you know it, the fact still remains that you need a huge speed differential in order to make a pass uh, on this track here so if you're just not able to make the, uh, that amount of difference in speed it's borderline impossible especially with a bit of light defending the guy in front usually will have all the advantages here especially in the spec series so Taj Ayman though he, he does know that as long as he stays uh, within touching uh, range of Uzziah that uh, his positioning there is going to keep the pressure going on to him and now we're, we're coming up to the what potentially could be the final lap here as we come across the line I believe it's just going to be in time now to start our final lap so Uzziah still leading this race now one more lap Practically to go. Yeah, sama seperti apa Victor mengatakan ini adalah lap yang terakhir di dalam race yang pertama untuk Group A semifinals. Tiada perubahan yang sangat drastik yang terbeli lihat di dalam P1 hingga ke P5. Touch Aiman masih lagi berada di dalam P kedua. Kita on board. Oh. Oh, nampaknya sedikit. Uh, kesilapan daripada Touch Aiman tadi He almost lost control Tetapi masih lagi tenang di situ And he's back on the track Uzair masih lagi memegang P pertama uh, P3 Danis Wignes Warren P4 Rio P5 Kira Lam Tetapi kita terus saja di dalam Sleko Yang kelima This is going to be a very challenging moment And let's see if Touch Aiman is able to make a change over here Victor It's quite crazy that even though he like uh, went so loose on the exit yes. there He did actually lose that much time He's still half a second behind Uzair as yep. he had been before that little bit of a spill there. So, I mean, that's just impressive that even when you're out, even when you're out of control, yeah. you're still able to keep up that pace, though. So, Taj Aiman, of course, he's he needs to be able to do this. He needs to stay within that half second in order to keep the pressure going on Uzair because he's hoping that Uzair is going to be the one to make the mistake, especially being the lead car. But nevertheless, though, the, still this battle, I think, is not going to be ending well for Taj Aiman, though, because Uzair has been able through and through to keep the lead throughout the race. He comes around the gym cart blend uh, in order to get to the main straight and now he's going to be taking the checkered flag to win the first race of Group A. Yeah, terbaik daripada Uzair. P kedua untuk Taj Aiman. P ketiga, Danish Vigneshwaran. Dan kita menunggu saja P keempat untuk Rio. P kelima, uh, Kira Lam. But what a race it has been, Victor. Not much of the actions that we saw. There was a little bit here and there. Tetapi, one thing for sure is the consistency of them. How they started the race, how they ended the race. 
Tiada kesilapan yang sangat besar. Mereka ni memang tahu. Mereka ni berada di dalam semi-final. They are at one step closer di dalam grand final. You cannot be making mistakes here, Victor. So, no. of course, credit goes to them. Fantastic racing. Yeah. Especially when it comes to, like, we're talking about a top 20 uh, Gran Turismo drivers yes. in Malaysia. Nothing short of perfection is going to be enough here, especially when you're talking about getting into that grand final. Literally top 10, you know, if you want to be able to get there, you have to be absolutely perfect in the way you perform. So uh, that perfection is definitely showing so well here, especially in the hands of Touch uh, Ayman as well as Mamba Uzair. But uh, now that we've already finished race number one now, it's going to be a reverse grid going into race number two so that means that now Taj Ayman and uh, uh, Taj Ayman and Umamo Uzaya are both yeah, going to have to fight be at the back. they're <laughs> going to be fighting their way from the back there to see who can make up more places and I mean that is what I want to see yeah. I mean we saw from the start of course lah, I mean we, we know lah, Victor can. when you have a very good perfect start you maintain that all the way till the end of the race fair enough mm -hmm. good, good racing so far but now you're put at the back and there will be other races right in front of you. There's going to be extra challenges coming up for you. So this is the real challenge di dalam race yang kedua. So kepada anda yang sedang menonton secara langsung, ini adalah Toyota Gazoo Racing Velocity Esports Championship 2022. Kita baru saja tamat semi-finals. Ah, semi-finals uh, yang pertama di dalam Group A sebenarnya. So kita akan masuk ke dalam race yang kedua tak lama lagi. So kita akan bersama dengan Nas sekarang ini. So Nas, take it over my brother. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Victor Cax. Thank you very much, Mr. Matthews Isaac. And now we are with the race winner for race one, semi-final one, Group A, Encik Muhammad Uze. Perasaan anda sejak menang season pertama. <laughs> Setakat ni masuk ke final saja. Dan uh, kalau tak salah saya, musim kelepas uh, tempat yang keempat, ya betul? Ya, betul. Jadi macam mana perasaan anda pada hari ini? Uh... Unexpected sebab saya tak saka uh, race ni begitu uh, sukar so saya expect yang lagi susah before this and then uh, harap tahun ni untuk tebusan lah daripada yang tahun lepas punya. Tebusan eh? Alamak okey Encik Uzi boleh tolong tarik sikit mas tu jadi sebab kita tak dengar sangat kan. Uh, baru kita nampak muka handsome dia dan nampak ni walaupun sim racing ya berpeluh-peluh dia tengok dia oh, macam racing betul lah. Jadi sekarang ni, Taj Aiman yang merupakan defending champion kita dua tahun berturut-turut. Apakah perasaan anda beating him in this first race? Awak rasa dia bagi chan ke memang atau strategi? Uh, saya rasa dia bagi chan. Uh, mungkin dia bagi chan sebab saya tak expect dia yang lebih sebuah. Saya expect dia lebih jauh daripada apa yang saya sangkakan lah. So mungkin uh, tahun ni memang saya rasa sangat sengit lah uh, untuk saingan dengan dia. Sangat sengit kerana Group A ini merupakan uh, banyak juga drivers yang uh, mempunyai banyak pengalaman. Uh, jadi di sini, untuk race tu kita akan pergi reverse grid 30 minit. Adakah strategi anda akan tetap sama? Uh, tak pasti sebab strategi akan berubah-ubah bergantung pada uh, opponent. Ah, itu dia. Itu dia. A thinking racer, ladies and gentlemen. Alright, thank you very much, Encik Muhammad Uze. Good luck for the next race. Dah kita dah bersedia untuk race tu, insyaAllah. Victor! Matthew, it's uh, over to you and let's take a look at the highlights of race one. Over to you. Alright, so nampaknya inilah highlights ataupun uh, boleh mengatakan the highlight daripada race yang pertama di dalam Group A semi-finals, Victor. Not much of action we saw, but one thing we saw is consistency of them. Exactly. I mean, again, the fact that Uzair was able to keep himself consistently in front of Taj Ayman throughout the entire race, even though Taj Ayman has been keeping half a second on average behind him. I mean, the Taj is even though, you know, even though Uzair says that uh, he, he felt that uh, Taj has been giving him a bit of a chance, it feels like uh, the whole time, actually, Taj has been just keeping that pressure going, but Uzair just didn't crack at all, you know. Uh, this was uh, where Kira Lam actually lost a lot of time by going off track there, so that allowed Rio the opportunity to overtake him on the main straight. Uh, and mostly the battle has just been between the you know the first and second guy as well as the uh, fourth and fifth guy, or rather previously fifth and sixth. Because uh, up to that point, uh, Kama Ali had a bit of a spill as well and that dropped him down to sixth place just outside of that top five for this race here. So he's definitely going to be looking to see whether he can make things up in the second race for sure. But, uh, you know, with um, Uzair already firing the first shot, you know, in this rally here, uh, I 
wonder what Taj Ayman's response will be when it comes to race number two. Because remember, in reverse grid, Taj Ayman is going to be starting in front of Uzair the, yes. that time around. And it's going to be a battle of who can make overtakes. So I would say the Taj has uh, plenty of uh, opportunities in our next race here to put some good answers to what Uzair is going to be able to do here in our first race. Absolutely. Dan kita juga nampak sedikit perlawanan antara uh, Rio dan juga Kiralam sebenarnya. They were changing positions a little bit here and there. Tetapi this is the I mean the main highlight of course. Taj Aiman and also Uzair man. Yeah, just absolutely pushing each other as hard as they can, yeah. even from this first race itself. And uh, this is going to determine a lot because remember, well, when we come to race two, uh, they're still going to be racing on the same track. So these guys know more or less what to expect, you know, especially with regards to their most closest rival. So the big difference is, of course, you know, the reverse grid uh, mixing up the, the positions a little bit. Now, now with uh, Taj Ahmed in front with Zaire, is Zaire still going to be able to get a good start, you know, in race number two in order to get past him, you know, from the first lap onwards or is that going to be a long and protracted battle especially with all the other uh, cars uh, surrounding them in front of them uh, being a, a bit of an obstacle a bit of impedance there uh, especially for those who are trying to get themselves up onto the top all right so jump kita lihat race results di dalam group A especially di dalam race yang pertama untuk semifinals so tempat pertama adalah Muhammad Uzair yang akan membawa pulang uh, 25 mata sebenarnya. Tempat kedua adalah Taj Izrin dengan 18 mata. Tempat ketiga, Danish Vigneshwaran dengan 15 mata. Tempat keempat, Rio dengan 12 mata. Tempat kelima, Kira Lam dengan 10 mata. Tempat keenam, Muhammad Kamal dengan 8 mata. Tempat ketujuh, Ahmad Siddiq dengan 6 mata. Tempat ke-8, Haris Syami dengan 4 mata. Tempat ke-9, Nur Farisman dengan 2 mata. Tempat ke-10, Chandra Mauli dengan 1 mata sahaja. Your overall views on the result there, Victor. I would, I would like to say that, you know, even for those guys who are stopping at the bottom there, remember, with the reverse grid, it's, they will still have a chance, you know, to uh, fight for even the top spots when it comes to the second race itself. So, you know, Chandra Mauli especially, I'm, I'm still uh, bewildered at the fact that, you know, this guy qualified into the semifinals here primarily using his controller instead of a steering wheel like the other competitors here. So, unfortunately, this time around, uh, coming to this uh, on-ground competition, he has to use the wheel just like everyone else. So it's going to be a bit of adjustment period, uh, especially remembering the fact that, you know, he himself is faster on the controller, he says, compared to actually using a steering wheel. So I wonder how he's going to improve, I think, as time goes on, because this is literally the first time he's managed to make it this far in the competition. And I'm really curious to see how he's going to be able to perform. But, you know, especially uh, for Taj Ayman, for Uzair, you know, these guys have already gotten the lion's share of the points now. So, like I said, half the work is already done coming to this. So this is just, uh, this second race here is just going to be a matter of how many positions they can make up, especially given that they're starting from the back. So the more uh, the more guys they're able to pass on the track there, the, the better it is uh, as far as the rivalry between two goes. So I'm still going to be curious to see whether Uzair is still going to be able to keep himself <laughs> just ahead of Taj Ayman, even in the points itself, because what a story that will be, you know. The defending champion now uh, having to defend against the returning champion here in the form of Uzair. I mean, if you look at us, we are enjoying this <laughs> yeah. because we know the rivalry. Tuan-tuan dan perempuan, di dalam semula uh, most of the musim sebenarnya musim sebelum ini di dalam uh, 2022 21 we have seen both of them battling each out dan juga pushing each other every single time tadi pun kita lihat interview daripada Nas dan juga Uzair Uzair mengatakan race ini sangat sengit uh, that means I mean the race is pretty tight today uh, so it's very wide open anything can happen at any any time so this is race Pertama sahaja. This is only race one. There's a long way to go, Smanya Victor. So let's see what's going to be happening. Yeah, it's going to be racing all the way throughout this day, isn't it? I mean, we still have the Group B races later yeah, on. It's going to be the same track as well. So you know, it's it's going to be a race all day long. You know, we, st we started from this morning. We're pretty much going to end at the night there with uh, finding out who our top ten in the grand finals are. So as uh, for the competitors, especially, you know, it's really pretty much this is the highest pressure situation for the be in here because you know one simple slip up any lap of this race uh, uh, of the races they have at all and that pretty much goes your chances really of getting in that top five because uh, again 
uh, if you end up like all the way in the back uh, of the in the back of the race, there, how are you going to be able to make up those places? You yeah, know, definitely, definitely. So that is something that they really need to watch out for. So jadi kita akan masuk ke dalam race yang kedua tak lama lagi. Uh, mereka ni sedang melakukan uh, persiapan yang terakhir before we get into race number two. But I'm really, really looking forward to this because it's going to be reverse grade. Tash Aiman dan juga Uzair akan berada di dalam uh, P yang agak belakang sebenarnya. So they need to get past a lot of obstacles di hadapan ni, Victor. Yeah, but uh, what's going to kind of help them a little bit, I think, is going to be the change in, in the tire and the fuel uh, mm -hmm. ballot when it comes to this feature race here. So uh, this time it's going to be uh, timing wise, it's going to be a little bit earlier. It's going to be at about 8.30 in game 30, time. Yeah. So it's a little bit earlier than the dusk time that we saw in race number one. Uh, tires are still going to be two times the simulation rate. But this time, fuel four times the simulation rate, so that's going to be uh, fuel used up four times faster than normal. So, so are we going to go for a pit stop? Well, the thing is that there already is a mandatory pit stop uh, required mm -hmm. for this feature race. So anytime during this race, the drivers will have to decide uh, when they want to take at least one pit stop uh, during the race. But with the fuel, you know, uh, being this uh, quickly burnt out, I wouldn't be surprised if some guys would uh, try to underfuel themselves here in order to gain them. Uh, some a lot of time, especially in the early, uh, the first stint, you know, of this race here. But uh, the thing is that if they're not too careful, you know, if they run out of uh, fuel for their stint, especially if they end up having to uh, run uh, the single stop and they don't fill the tanks up full enough, they might end up having to take another pit stop again to refuel before the end of the race there, and that's going to cost them a lot of time. So now. No, now they already know exactly how much uh, fuel is going to be consumed in this race here. It's going to be critical for them to get it just right. You know, you want to fuel it uh, so that you don't carry too much extra weight during the start, but you also want to plan your pit stop to ensure that you will have enough fuel to end the race with after the first stop. Of course, I mean, kita dah tahu dah bagaimana mereka ni akan mengaturkan strategi mereka. Especially, uh, we know the fuel is going to be burning a lot more faster compared to the first race. So. In the previous seasons, I'm not sure if you remember, but we have seen few races that didn't did not did not finish the race because, because yeah, the tank fuel. went empty. Yeah, the, <laughs> the tank went out. empty. Yeah, so we do not want those kind of incidents to happen. But you never know. Might be watching racing for the wrong reasons. But yes, <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is racing, anyways. I mean, but yeah, it's hardly a race when you're out of fuel, anyway. <laughs> so uh, we just hope that. Well, just hope uh, that, that doesn't happen. But you know, again, when you're, you know, in the heat of the in the heat of the battle, you're using up more fuel than you are are expecting sometimes, or maybe you just made a slight miscalculation. You know, those kind of things do happen. So uh, you you they. Just have to make sure, like, especially for those guys who are absolute experts when it comes to this game, that they've planned it uh, to a T here. Because remember, just like with the way they race, it has to be perfect in every single regard. How they race, how they plan the strategy, and how they're going to want, uh, how they're going to uh, make their way up to the top. Yeah, so jadi kita akan uh, masuk di dalam race yang kedua tak lama lagi once everything is well ready for us to go into race number two. All right. So one thing for sure is that I'm really looking forward to. Kepada anda yang sedang menonton secara langsung di dalam Facebook dan social media, make sure anda like dan juga share live stream ini kepada rakan-rakan anda, because this is going to be very exciting. Kita nak tengok siapakah yang akan masuk ke dalam grand final, especially di dalam dua-dua group di dalam semifinals ni. So kita tunggu dan lihat. Yeah, and of course, uh, any of you guys who are living close to Wanatama, why don't you drop over here? We are over here, over live here. in the old wing itself. You can go ahead and have a look at some of the activations here. You can also pick up some cool merch from the GR Garage. We've got uh, t-shirts and hoodies as well uh, for you guys who want to uh, bring home some good, good GR merch. So do check us out over here in Wanatama because uh, we're going to be starting our second race very, very soon now. And uh, this is going to be a doozy because because again, I want to see uh, how Taj, uh, Ayman, and Uzair are going to be continuing this rivalry, you know, between these two f uh, champions of the Velocity Championship. Uh, who's going to be the one that comes yes. on top on race number two? We're going to be finding out in a few moments. All right, so ini adalah race yang kedua. Kita lihat dah race yang pertama dengan cukup hebat. So jadi lampu pun dipadamkan and let's go racing on ta on. Kita lihat Chandra berada di dalam B yang pertama. Satu perfect start yang cukup baik Farisman. Oh, 
bagaimana dengan Faris Man tetapi Haris Sefri terus saja memintas mengambil P yang pertama di dalam Sleko yang pertama Chandra drop ke dalam P kedua P ketiga untuk Faris Man and this is going to be a long long journey terus saja kita lihat bagaimana Chandra cuba untuk mengegori Haris sekarang ini untuk memberikan tekanan tetapi masih lagi kita lihat Haris memenggang saja di dalam P yang pertama diikuti di belakang P keempat Kira Lam cuba untuk masuk ke dalam P ketiga dan bagaimana beliau akan cuba kita tunggu dan Look lihat di dalam P keempat Wow. Touch Ayman is already up to fifth place. He cuts on the inside here, coming through the That guy's a good man. This guy <laughs> literally flew his way to the middle of the grid. Now it is a mixing it up uh, with Uzziah, with uh, Farisman, and Kira Lam. So now we're going to be coming through Hawthorne now, going up to Dingledale. This is going to be a very critical corner here. Touch Ayman makes up a couple of places through that. Oh, he's already that. in third place. Now he's going to be battling Kala Ali for wow. second place. Wow. Now he takes an inside as easily as he eats the cake. Wow. Now it's only one more person left in the front. There is Hari Zephyr. He has a 2.4 second gap now uh, ahead of Tosh Ayman. Can't touch. Close the gap though because looking at the pace he's had in this first lap itself, I wouldn't be surprised you will catching uh, Hari Zephyr by the middle of this race. Yeah, out of this world. Dari pada Tosh Ayman sekarang ni yang berada di dalam P kedua. Dan eh, misi beliau adalah untuk mengejar Hari Zephyr yang berada di dalam P yang pertama. But, Tando, what a way to go up to P2, man. Uh, Ah, daripada posisi agak belakang sebenarnya tetapi terus saja berada di dalam P yang kedua itu adalah Touch Aiman sekarang ni so Haris Zafri nampaknya Touch Aiman datang dengan cukup pantas di dalam P yang kedua and let's see if there's going to be any sorts of changes di dalam uh, seleko-seleko yang akan datang kita berada di dalam seleko yang ketiga kita on board bersama dengan Haris Zafri yang masih lagi cuba mengatakan please don't come closer there Touch Aiman <laughs> that's what you can think of right now or just pray that's not get the timing right over here but one thing for sure is this man is going to chase him down well that's the thing i mean what's going to be stronger than prayer your own skills your own two hands i mean harry's going to have to rely on that pretty much because touch i is catching him uh, especially with the incredible speed coming out of uh you know, hot on straight so uh touch Iman now is 1.8 seconds he's already made up uh, about four tenths maybe five tenths uh, of time now as compared to harry zephyr so sooner or later he might be catching them soon but uh, quite important as well he's opening a gap between himself with Zaire. now Uzair uh early on in the first lap was in sixth place he's already overtaken danish because warren now to put himself up into fifth now next person on the menu here is going to be kira lam yep. and given how hard kira lam has been battling with uh, uh rio early on in race one now he's battling with kama ali for potentially a podium position here and it looked like he almost had a look around the outside there he's going to take a wider line actually in order to try to gain maximum speed on the exit of uh, the jim clark curve and now he's uh, attempting to get the drop of Kamali but still not able to overtake him by the time again at the first turn he's having a little bit of a look at the inside but didn't quite have the speed nor the gap required in order to overtake Kamali for that third place yeah satu perjalanan yang agak panjang sebenarnya di dalam race ini tetapi kita dihidangkan dengan pelbagai aksi yang cukup menarik di dalam uh, first few laps sebenarnya so kita on board bersama dengan Kira Lam di dalam P yang keempat dan di dalam P ketiga adalah Kamal Ali yang uh, masih lagi cuba untuk uh, mempertahankan posisi beliau daripada oh nampaknya Uzair sekarang ni dalam P ke-5 dah Victor so he is climbing up and it's taking few moments to come all the way to the top dan ini dia Touch Aiman yang kini berada di dalam P yang kedua masih lagi cuba untuk mengejar Haris Zafri yang berada di dalam oh. P yang pertama okay, dan nampaknya Kira Lam dan itu dia pintasan yang baik daripada Kira Lam tetapi sekarang bagaimana sekarang ni untuk Kira Lam uh, no. No, he's it's... still still shutting it down there Yeah. Kamal Ali masih lagi menutup ruang masih lagi menafikan gerakan-gerakan daripada Kira Lam oh, tetapi sekarang Kira Lam oh. Oh, terus saja kita lihat di dalam uh, Sleko yang ke-8 berada di dalam garisan ke dalam tetapi ditutup rapat sekali lagi oleh Kamal Ali but Kamal Ali is just showing no mercy towards Kira Lam man as long as he's on the racing line there he's yes. guaranteed to have the speed through those uh, sec uh, those sequence of corners so Kira unfortunately had to react uh, every time to come out of breaks there because he's blocking the way for him get through but uh -huh. then now is he going to be able this? to find a way through he's going to hook around a back of flight he's going to try to outbreak him coming to that first turn try to carry the speed but by the time to get through Kira Lam now is in P3 but uh, Kamali still hangs on beside him and look at who's coming through as well Uzair now is using the opportunity in order to cut himself into fourth place so Kamali loses two places now drops to P5 Uzair now follows Kira Lam's lead and gets himself into fourth Kira 
Kalam in third. Ya, saya dah mengatakan tadi dah Victor, they are just waiting for the right time untuk melakukan movement-movement dan sekarang ni kita lihat Zahir berada di lampi keempat and uh, nampaknya beliau oh, masih Zahir. mendekati Kiralam sekarang ni and Kiralam really needs to watch out for this moment. <laughs> Zahir di dalam pi ketiga, pintasan yang cukup cemerlang daripada Zahir and now he's going for touch Aiman but this battle is still pretty tight. Oh yeah, I mean he's still 2.5 seconds but no, it looks like Kiralam is going to try to fight back through Dingledell. Is he going to get it inside? It looks like he does actually. He closes himself in front of Zahir ensuring that he maintains that third position. Oh, but Zahir continues to try to fight back through the center here. Kamali now getting himself into the mix here. This is a three-way battle for third place. Who's going to be able to come on top for now? It's still going to be Kira Lam in third place now as he passes Uzair and stays in the podium position. But Uzair continues to fight, continues to try to find a trap. Now tries to find a good exit out here onto the pin straight. Can he still maintain this speed though? Look at that. So close as it come across the line. Need a four-way battle there, Victor. Dan bagaimana sekarang kita akan lihat di dalam Sleko yang pertama yang akan datang sekarang ni Kira Lam masih lagi berada di dalam P ketiga dan P keempat adalah Uzair P kelima untuk Kamal Ali and let's see there's going to be any sorts of changes kita lihat Danish uh, cuba masuk right. sekarang ni untuk memintas Kamal Ali oh. tetapi Danish weakness warna ini memintas juga akhirnya mengambil P kelima sekarang ni meninggalkan Kamal Ali di dalam P keenam that was elbows out through Druids there Danish now putting himself out of P5 now he can actually get himself into the mix there between Kira and Uzair here and now look at that Uzair almost had a look at the inside through Surtees this is going to compromise Kira Lam's exit indeed Uzair now takes the lead through the straight now but Kira of course will be able to tuck in behind to get a toe will he be able to fight back through Dingledale they need to carry the speed all the way through these very very fast sequence of right hand turns Kira Lam now staying on the racing line staying right on Uzair's tail has a look on the inside there cancels his idea still sticks himself behind Uzair he wants to be able to keep himself within a half a second gap by the time to get through this part here but now it's going to be all about the exit through here can he maintain the speed doesn't look quite like it because Uzair is still maintaining his third position still maintains good speed as it comes through the starting and lost corner yeah tekanan masih lagi diberikan terhadap uh, Uzair sekarang ni yang berada di lampi ketiga tetapi P keempat adalah untuk Kira Lam dan kita tunggu saja is there going to be any sorts of changes di dalam P ketiga sekarang ni dan di dalam P keempat kita lihat Kira Lam masih lagi agak nampaknya belakang dengan 0.5 saat sekarang ni dan kita tunggu dan lihat what is going to be happening di dalam 22 minit saja yang berbaki di dalam race yang kedua semifinals group A sekarang ni on at this moment kita lihat Danish Vignesh Warren berada di dalam P ke-5 he had a little bit of a changes in position there Victor from P6 going up on to P5 and let's see if he's able to give some challenges over here although they are looking like they're losing it out on the back yeah well the thing is that I think with all the defending that Uzair yeah. and uh, Kira Lam have been doing there that's actually uh, pushing them that back a little bit and that's putting the fourth fifth and sixth place guys into play now uh touch Ayman like I said he would be catching Harris uh Harris uh, Shami by the time they get to the middle point in this race. I mean, we're about a third of the way through and Taj Ayman is already within shooting distance of Harris uh, Zephyr. Uh, Zephyr Ray is right now about 1.5 seconds ahead now. They've definitely been uh, etching away at the time Taj Ayman has uh, all this while. But it's a little bit harder, especially when you don't have anyone to, look, to kind of borrow a toe off of. So until Taj Ayman can get within touching distance of Harris, he's still going to have to rely on his uh, excellent time attack skills here in order to make up the difference in terms of lap time and so far so good I mean he set a 129.3 and that's already two tenths faster than whatever in. Harris Zephyr is able to do yeah so nampaknya Taj Aiman he's going into the pits there Victor is it? yes he went yeah, into the pits he went into the pits Yep, Taj Ayman is going to be taking his first mandatory spin stop. He's starting on the medium tire. So Harris, Zari, uh, Harris Zephyr Ray still can continue on in the lead here. Of course, the drivers can decide when they want to go to pits anytime during this race here. So looks like, uh, looks like, uh, uh, sorry, looks like Taj Ayman now is going to try to go for the undercut here. Basically, undercutting everyone by pitting early on here. Uh, no doubt, uh, it will be using uh, a little bit fresher tires, but uh, the thing is that it's the race will be going on. He's going to be on a slightly uh, 
worn out tire by the time uh, we get to his late stages of this race. So he's really banking on the fact that he was able to make up lots of places at the start of this race here in order to set up this strategy here. So whether or not that other kind of work, we'll have to see whether or not uh, that will uh, that will happen over the course of this race. Yes, and nampaknya ada 20 minit saja yang berbaki di dalam race ini. Kita on board bersama dengan Kiralam yang berada di dalam P ketiga. Diikuti oleh Muhammad Uzair di dalam P yang kedua. Kita lihat almost half a tank dah untuk uh, fuel consumption beliau. So he'll be going into the pits very, very soon or else he'll be out of fuel and he'll be out of the race. And that is not usually what you see. But although we have seen those kind of things before anyways, but yes, yang nampaknya belakang dengan kosong point oh, nampaknya kosong point tiga saat saja uh, right behind Uzair sekarang ni Victor anything can happen at this moment yeah I mean still Kiralam is maintaining himself quite well behind oh, Uzair and Dennis just coming. ensuring that he's uh, maintaining that toe as long as he's on that straight so the thing is that Danish is also trying to catch up here he wants to make this a three way battle so uh, he needs to be able to close up though much much more than that in order to be able to join in on this little fight here but Kiralam so far hasn't been able to find a way past Uzair quite yet but given that he's uh, in third place now this is an even better result compared to what we had what he had in race number one so even if he maintains this position he's already benefiting massively uh, after already making up those positions one guy that's going to be in a little bit of trouble here perhaps is Kam uh, Muhammad Kamal Ali because now he's being chased by Nor Farisman and Farisman actually gets a much better exit out here forced to kind of back off a little bit on the Hawthorn straight but he's definitely getting the toe of Kamal Ali now. Can he get a long slide? He's going to try to attack around the outside, which is going to be a bit difficult actually for Farisman, but can he carry the speed though? Kamal Ali has the racing line, but Farisman has the speed. Gets him on the exit now. Still stays side by side through Dingledale. That's going to be going too wide all throughout this uh, few sectors, I think. Because uh, Farisman though, he's still maintaining lots of good speed around the outside here. Constantly bumping tires against oh, Kamal Ali, but forced to back up a little bit by the time they get to Sterling Moss. Yes, yeah, segala aksi yang kita lihat antara pertarungan Kamal Ali dan juga Faris Man, tetapi Kamal Ali still somehow made it to P6, man. He's still holding on to it, and that is what quite surprising. Walaupun kita lihat Faris Man mempunyai speed di dalam beberapa Sleko, especially on the exits. Tetapi kita tunggu dan lihat if there is going to be any changes di dalam Sleko yang pertama yang akan datang tak lama lagi. But the gap is pretty much wide up antara Kamal Ali dan juga Farisman dengan 0.3 saat so it's just waiting for Kamal Ali in case of making any sorts of mistakes things can change absolutely drastic but at this moment Taj Ayman is the fastest man on the track talking at 1.29.035 that's actually almost like 129 flat there for Taj Ayman yeah. he's so so fast uh, in, that, in, in that car now so uh, the thing is that he's banking on this undercut here to basically be able to get ahead of a lot of these guys running in front here the moment they will be taking their pit stops and knowing that he's already made up so many places in his first stint there I wouldn't be surprised if he finds himself uh, fighting all the way back up uh, to the top three there the big question uh, in my mind though is whether or not his undercut is going to be super effective against both Uzair and Aris uh, Zephyr Ray because both of these guys uh, are definitely looking to try to pit around the midpoint of this race here which is going to be the most logical place if you're going to be taking a one-stop strategy here so touch Ayman for the most part is going to be used he actually started on a medium tire then now went to the pits for the soft tire and very much I think is going to try to maintain these soft tires all the way to the end of the race so the fact that he's still pushing and it's still setting like the fastest lap here goes to show that you know even though uh, he's going for that long strategy here he's still uh, pushing extremely hard he so, is, he is definitely Another kind of calculus I'm thinking about as well is that given that the fuel degradation is this high, could there be a potential here for some of these guys to go for uh, two-stop strategies, you know, instead of a single stop? Because again... Uh, They're really pushing the car anyway, so... Yeah. They're pushing the car. Yeah. Uh, the thing is that Taj Ayman is uh, more or less fully fueled, so I... I, I would expect that he should be able to take this race within the one stop but it would be kind of interesting if any of these drivers decide to you know take that risk underfuel themselves a little bit and try to push for fastest lap after fastest lap in order to maximize uh, the the speed of each of this, the two stints there in order to make up for the having to take the extra pit stop so definitely oh look at the timing he just clocked over there 
definitely different calculus here, but the fact that Touch Ima is still continuing to set another fastest lap tells me that maybe that strategy might be on the cards here, given that he is on the softer compound than when he started his first stint. Yeah, so masih lagi kita lihat on board bersama dengan Touch Aiman yang berada di dalam P kelima. Kalau kita lihat di dalam uh, skala top 5, P pertama masih lagi dipegang oleh Hari Safri. P kedua untuk Muhammad Uzair. P ketiga untuk Kira Lam. Dan P kelima sekarang ini untuk Touch Aiman. I wonder what's happening in the back there, man. Yeah, I mean, some of these guys have already gone to the pits there, so yeah. Touch Aiman has already inherited three places now, thanks to this undercut strategy. Yep, but now, uh, yeah, Kira Lam yep. and Uzair are both jumping into the pits now. And uh, the thing is, Touch Aman is already at the uh, main straight now, so I think he's going to be able to overtake the two of them. And yes, he does. He gets himself up into third place now, just behind Ryo Pandukusuma, as well as Harry Zephyray, who both have yet to take their pit stops. So there's still about 10 seconds of a gap now to Ryo. Not sure how many seconds to Harry Zephyray, but I'm expecting it's probably within that 20 second uh, window here. So if all goes to plan here, Touch Aman might inherit the lead here after Harris and Rio both take their mandatory pit stops. Yeah, climbing it pretty slow and steady. Kita lihat daripada Touch Aiman sekarang ni. So on board bersama dengan uh, Hari Safri yang masih lagi berada di dalam pit yang pertama. So he will be going into the pits very, very shortly there, Victor. Looking at his fuel consumption over there. It is going, dropping down. And uh, I'm not sure if he's really pushing... But yeah, want to, ah, look oh, at this battle oh. sekarang ni. Kita lihat Kira Lam. Nampaknya ada sedikit pertarungan antara Danish Witness Warren, Kira Lam dan juga Sidek sekarang ni. And what is going to be happening over here? Is this a battle for P5 at this moment? Sidek berada di dalam garisan yang keluar. Dan garisan ke dalam dipegang oleh Kira Lam. Dan nampaknya gerakan yang sangat baik dipamerkan oleh Kira Lam so far. Menafikan gerakan-gerakan daripada Sidek. Tetapi masih lagi Sidek datang saja daripada garisan. Daripada luar. Tetapi exitnya masih lagi kita lihat dinafikan. Can only Kira Lam. Man, we were focusing too much on the front. We lost this battle for B5. I would say Kira is actually oh, in a very dangerous how did position. He... Oh, okay, 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 okay. Zaire, Zaire, Zaire. He's, Zaire. he's uh, on a fresh set of tires, so yeah. he's able to get past a Siddiq here. But I was going to say that very the thing nice. that's working against Kira Lam in this battle here, particularly, is that Siddiq, uh, even uh, he hasn't taken his pit stop yet, so he's actually quite light in terms of fuel load. And that's actually giving him uh, less weight compared to Kira Lam. Now, of course, uh, both of them have uh, already pulled ahead in the lead here. City goes in to take the pit as Uzziah now gets a very good draft, tries to attack around the outside here on the first turn, can't quite make the move yet, but now attacks on the inside, the switch around here as he gets to Druids, can he outbreak him? He's going to get himself alongside here, elbow his, his way into four plays, but Kira fights back, Kira tries to get himself in behind Uzziah and he can continue to try to bring this fight forward in true Graham Hill and perhaps even to Surtees. Yeah, one thing yang saya boleh lihat daripada Uzziah, bila beliau dah ada di dalam posisi yang baik, he will do his very best to defend and his focus will straight away switch to the driver in the front. So kita tunggu dah lihat how things are going to be changing so far. Uh, Kira Lam right now having a fantastic race so far di dalam race yang kedua compared to dalam uh, race yang pertama. Dan Danish Pignesh Warren juga di dalam P ketiga sekarang ni. Dan kita lihat Muhammad Uzair is chasing this man. Kita lihat dah dengan pelbagai interview yang uh, dikatakan oleh dua-dua pelumba ni. Danish has a proof, uh, has a point to prove over here. And Uzair on the other side, being a much of a fair man in this race. But in the end of the day, it's all about how you put yourself on the track. Yes, so far you can see the effect that the extra fuel load is having on Uzair's time. I mean, uh, in his oh, first man, day before that. the pit stop, he was setting 129s very consistently. Now his uh, first kind of flying lap after his pit stop lap, he's only just set a 132. So he's now trying to chase uh, up to Danish because Warren, who's also already taken his pit stop. So the Boba Dome will be on similar fuel loads, I expect. Harry Zephyray has actually caught up to uh, Chandra, who is uh, in 10th place right now. So Harry is, is actually on the verge of lap one of our competitors here as he come towards the main straight. So blue flags are being waved now for Chandra to make way for the current race leader, Harry Zephyre, yep. who at the moment, may I remind you, has not taken his pit stop yet. So Taj Ayman, who is currently in second place, may have an opportunity to cut him uh, as soon as Harris uh, takes his pit stop. Now it's going to be up to Harris here to try to maintain a good enough lead here so that hopefully he'll still be somewhere in the top three by the time he comes out of the pits. Oh, this is quite
quite of a gamble there, Victor. We have seen lots of dramas that have act, uh, actually happened, especially when you're taking a, a very high risk like this. But let's see if there's going to be any sorts of changes. So, so far in P1, it is still going to be Harry Zephyrs yet to be going into the pits. P2 for Dutch Ayman, P3 for Danish Victor's and P4 for Zayer, P5, it's going to be Kira Lam. So, yes, let's see what's going to be happening in this last 10 minutes to go. Yeah, still 10 minutes ago, and Zephyr is just going for, you know, the long first stint, and then hopefully uh, maybe, maybe keeping this, uh, allowing those tires to last until close to the end of the race before having to take his mandatory spit stop. So the thing is, he's still about 13 seconds in front of Touch Ayman, so by... By like logic, I think Taj Ayman will be able to overtake him if uh, Harris goes into pits now. And I'm quite doubtful, especially at this stage with, with the tires already worn out quite a bit. And even with the weight differential, I don't know if uh, Zephyr Ray is going to be able to maintain uh, this kind of uh, lead here because it seems to be dropping uh, steadily and steadily as Taj Ayman consistently setting 128 all throughout. I mean, he had uh, taken ample time here to burn off the fuel to uh, get some good uh, heat in those tires and then at at this point now, he's just going to be sending flying lap after flying lap here in hopes of catching up to Zephyr Ray. But uh, the pit stop, that's going to determine everything here as far as the lead of this race number two is concerned. Yeah, absolutely. Kalau kita lihat daripada, kalau kita bandingkan race yang pertama dan juga race yang kedua, banyak perubahan drastik yang kita boleh lihat, especially this battle antara Taj Aiman dan juga Uzair. But at this moment there, Victor, we see drastic changes. We see Taj Aiman right now holding on to P2. Very soon might be P1. Once uh, Harris goes into his uh, pits, of course, but I think Taj Ayman right now is just trying to show a point over here. Yeah, he looked a little... he's making a statement, man. Look, uh, I was going to mention, like looking at the the grass there, you can see clear tire marks of where Taj Ayman keeps uh, yeah. dipping his tires onto the outside there to to okay. maximize his line on the final turn. Rio Pantukusuma now is having an opportunity to fight Kiralam. He has a draft now coming to his final turn. Uh, he needs to set up the exit here perfectly though in order to make the pass. But it seems like Kiralam is just defending so hard around the inside there that Rio is just going to be forced to try to attack around the outside. It's going to put him a bit of a disadvantage by the time to get to the breaking point for the first turn. Now it looks like Rio is going to try to get alongside, can't quite make it through the breaking there. He's going to try to switch around here, the switch, old oh, switcheroo around the Druids there. And it looks like Rio might just be a little bit ahead by the time they break for Druids. And look at that, oh, following behind him, come on, Ali now getting himself into P6 here ahead of Kira Lam. Kira now drops two places. Yeah, how did this happen? So, nampaknya battle untuk P5 masih lagi terbuka antara Rio, Kamal Ali dan juga Kira Lam sekarang ini. Dan kita lihat Kamal Ali masih lagi cuba mendekati dengan Rio sekarang ini. Yang Rio masih lagi memegang kepada P yang kelima. Will be will we be seeing any sorts of changes di dalam Sleko yang kelima yang akan datang tak lama lagi. Downhill sekarang ini. Dan breaking point sangat-sangat important sekarang ini. Dan kita lihat bagaimana Kamal Ali masih lagi mempertahankan uh, P yang keenam. And yes, of course, they are trying their very best not to have any sorts of uh, incidents. We do not want any sorts of incidents there, Victor. But at this moment, Kamal Ali is still chasing down Rio. I mean, I did not expect that this P5 is going to be open again. Well, again, I mean, uh, the difficult part about trying to pass in this section here is that it's such a fast, uh, fast, fast yeah. series of corners. The ideal line is still that racing line. So there's, even if you deviate from that line a little bit, you know, the amount of time or you might gain or lose is just not going to be enough to actually catch up to those guys who are still staying on the uh, racing line consistently throughout. So that's kind of the difficulty for Kira Lam. He really, uh, the only good places to pass here pretty much is on the main straight or the long back stretch uh, that is Hawthorne. Uh, straight. So uh, for this, for now, Kira is just going to have to bank off of two uh, sources of uh, toll here, uh, both for, uh, both in the form of uh, Rio Pantabusuma as well as uh, Mama Kamal. Oh, Kamal Lee has already spun around. Oh, no. What happened? Oh, no. Let's look at the replay here. Let's say Kamal actually comes through the first turn. He looked like quite well, but oh, just hit the kiss of death from the curbs there. Unfortunately, ate up Kamal Lee, forced him into a spin, and unfortunately lost him two places now so the battle for p5 is only between two characters now and that's rio and kira Lam. i mean i gotta take back what i said just now you know there's not such an incident i hope there will be not any sort of incident happen and boom where we saw one of the races spawning out out of nowhere but yeah 
Benda ni yeah. sangat-sangat terbuka Benda ni memang boleh berlaku But it is what it is So di dalam 6 minit saja yang berbaki Di dalam race yang kedua Semi-finals Group A Dan kita tunggu dah lihat Who is going to be having those leads at this moment So kita bersama dengan uh, Rio Yang kini berada di dalam P kelima Seperti apa Victor mengatakan This battle has been shortened out Antara uh, Kiralam dan juga Rio Siapakah yang akan mendapatkan P kelima Kita tunggu dan lihat at this moment Masih lagi Rio yang memegang posisi ini Dan kita terus saja ke dalam Sleiko yang pertama Yeah, look the look of exasperation on Kamali's face I really got a feel for him though Because again, the, the thing about the curbs Especially in Gran Turismo Is that sometimes it's a bit of RNG Sometimes like you can eat the curb uh, pretty heavily and still not uh, sustain too much damage uh, rather uh, sustain too much instability but that time though Kamali literally pushing to the ragged edge of that first turn there unfortunately the RNG gods didn't favor him that time and the curbs just basically forced him into a spin so still what's exactly it's his fault there unfortunately but uh, anyways uh, Harry Zephyr Ray now has uh, already taken his pit stop again he's ended up behind touch Ayman so our current two time champion defending champion in 2022 he is now in the lead of race number two yeah as expected there must be the lead touch Ayman yang berada di dalam P yang pertama dan Haris Refri di dalam P yang kedua dan uh, kalau kita lihat Haris Refri uh, itu dia boleh mengatakan uh, beliau adalah uh, berumur 26 sahaja and yep Di dalam uh, musim yang lepas beliau menghabiskan race ini di dalam tempat kelima sebenarnya. So I think having a P2 over here is not that bad of a deal actually, Victor. Oh, it's not bad at all. I mean, the fact that he's ahead, uh, ahead of Uzair and Danish already is putting quite a bit of pressure onto those two drivers, like Specs, because you know they, they're going to have to watch out for Harris uh, in the upcoming races here because he's going to have a lot of points uh, after this finish here. But of course, the bulk of it is going to be coming to touch Ayman here with the seven second uh, lead now. This is going to be a very relaxing drive, I think, for our defending champion. <laughs> I mean, of course, it's like going on a Saturday drive in the front. No pressure, no nothing. It's like, you know, you're just, it's just you and also the track. Yep. No disturbance at all. Uh, look at the gap. He has seven seconds uh, behind. Uh, he's just in front and uh, Zafri is right behind seven seconds. 7.9 actually. But yes, that is a big, big gap uh, compared to Tasha Ayman and also Haris Zafri. So, it's there. Kita lihat race leader kita itu Taj Aiman yang berada di dalam P yang pertama. Satu race yang cukup baik kalau kita lihat daripada awal ataupun permulaan untuk race ini. Beliau naik saja uh, setiap tangga dengan pantas. And now he's in P1. I think he has been putting on a fantastic performance here, Victor. I mean, he's been putting in fantastic performance for years now, I might add. I mean, a champion of 2020 and 21. Uh, Taj Aiman has a lot to prove here uh, if he wants wants to be able to re, uh, retain the title for this year and what a drive it has been for him you know over these years here the fact that he's still able to keep himself consistently on top of everyone else uh, is a, truly a testament to the level of his skills when it comes to Gran Turismo Sport so uh, with all these other guys Danish, Uzair all vying for that crown as well Taj Ayman I would say came to this on-ground event with the highest pressure actually as a returning uh, as a defending champion champion so uh, you know he's and I have to say you know all throughout he's been ke keeping himself in a very cool and calm attitude even in interviews he just seems so relaxed at times that yep. you wonder is this the guy who is like defending uh, his uh, third championship this year I mean he just seems so confident so relaxed and uh, so sure of his ability to win these races I mean these are the kinds of uh, characteristics that you have especially when you are at the very best that Victor. So, that's it. It'll be an example for many other races to come in the future. But itu dia. Kita bersama dengan Danish Weakness Warren. I think uh, so far, it has been pretty good uh, for Danish as well. Especially in this previous race. I think he finished in P6 if I got it right. Uh, or, or P4 if I got it right. But yes, so far, he got in, uh, getting himself in this top three is just a good day for him as well. 
Yeah, I mean, Dan is just, of course, one of the favorites here in Group A. He's yeah. a very, a, a very uh, highly skilled driver when it comes to Gran Turismo because, you know, he has regional records uh, in, in Gran Turismo Sport, 20 of them, in fact. So he's been consistently going out there, you know, uh, practicing these circuits, uh, trying to gain the maximum title out of it, and even earn himself a world record in uh, <laughs> one of the tracks in Gran Turismo 7. So, you know, uh, that's the kind of, like, dedication that these guys need, you know, to be one of the top drivers here in Malaysia. You know, you have to just keep practicing, keep refining your craft, uh, keep improving yourself and pushing uh, your abilities to the limit, you know. So uh, with, with especially with people like Taj Ayman who are like uh, super, super dominant at this game, like I said, you need to be absolutely perfect in all aspects in order to beat these kind of guys. So, you know, it all starts from that grind. It all starts from uh, from ground zero pretty much and you just need to build yourself up all the way until you get to the very top. Yeah, so Taj Ayman yang berada di dalam PE yang pertama. So just one more lap to go, the final lap, and we will be having him on the podium. Of course, there, man, Victor. Yeah, I think the time is going to run out before he reaches that line, though. So I think Taj Ayman is going to be coming soon now to take the checkered flag for race number two. Our defending champion from 2020 and 2021 comes to take the checkered flag in race number two and wins it for Group A. Yeah, fantastic racing from this man. And P2 goes for Harry Safri. P3 for Danis Wigneshwaran. And what a race it has been for all of these races, especially in this Group A. Man, it's a long race. We saw lots of actions happening, especially in the middle of the race. But in the end of the day, there's only going to be these races that are going to be getting the most crucial points. So let's see what's, we got, what's going to be happening in these final moments as we are getting closer for the end. And uh, Rio Pantukusuma and Kira Lam comes in now to take uh, fifth and sixth place respectively. For Kira, he's literally in the most awkward spot, I would think, when it comes to the points because uh, finishing somewhere in fifth, if I'm not mistaken, for the first race and now finishing in sixth here for race number two, he's going to be under pressure, severe pressure to keep himself in the top five when it comes to races three and four. Uh, so that's going to be something interesting to see as we carry on here to see Kamal Ali now coming across the line to take P8. What a what a sad result for him. He was at times fighting for that fifth position. It was looking almost like he was going to be able to get himself up to four, but an unfortunate incident with the curbs here has unfortunately costed him dearly in race number two. Yeah, satu race yang cukup menarik dan cukup baik daripada semua uh, para pelumpa kita, especially di dalam Group A. But then, Victor, one question to ask you: your driver of the day. The driver of the day, I mean, it's a little bit early to ask, right? I mean, especially for this, <laughs> la, uh, this race, this race. Okay, for we go one by one. I mean, for Group A, I mean, Taj yeah. Ayman, just for the fact that he was able to make up, what, nine places? Eight, sorry, eight places yeah. at he, the start of he the... He overtakes everyone pretty fast. At the start of yeah. the race, you know, the first lap itself is making up so many places. I mean, Taj uh, definitely deserves a lot of credit uh, for this race specifically. Uh, as for overall, though, I mean, for me, it's between Taj and Uzair uh, very much. I mean, Uzair's brilliant performance in race number one, constantly defending against Taj Ayman, maintaining himself half a second ahead of uh, Taj Ayman all throughout race number one is itself, I think, driver of the day worthy as well. But Taj Ayman's performance here in race number two, just uh, constantly getting those overtakes done itself also earns me, uh, earns him, I think, like a driver of the day title potentially. So, you know, it's quite funny because both of these yeah. guys are fighting for the championship, but even I can't decide between the two of them when it comes to driver the day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what Victor said. It's pretty early to say, but then we're going to change the rules a little bit. We're going to go each each races. We're going to find the best drivers. I mean, it's fair enough. Sometimes, you know, some of the races that uh, did not get enough credit and they get themselves in the driver of the day, especially with massive overtakings and stuff. Just pretty much. I know, I know it does not add anything actually, Victor, but yeah, maybe a word of appreciation actually. But yes, it has been an amazing race so far, especially in this group uh, A. So let's see what's going to be happening very soon. That'll be coming up in race three. But before that, we will be going with Nas, where I'll be interviewing Alex Jung as well. So, Nas, take it over, my brother. Thank you very much, Matthew. Thank you very much, Victor. What an exciting race one and race two. Jadi kepada anda yang bersama-sama kita di One Utama Shopping Complex, tepukan untuk drivers-drivers kita. Well done! 
Well done. Look at the smile on Taj Aiman's face. And now, I have a smile on my face because right here with me, I have Alexander Jung, Malaysia's first F1 driver. And this man, he's got a heart of gold. He's now giving back to Malaysia by developing our young drivers with Axel Motorsports. And so, Alex, thanks for being here. And now this is season five of Toyota Gazoo Racing Velocity Championships. What does it mean for the Toyota Gazoo Racing brand? And what does it mean for the sim races? Well, it's not just for the sim races, for the motorsport community. I mean, what Toyota has done here, what a platform they've built, you know, the opportunity for the drivers to show what they can do. And a lot of these drivers are getting to real life racing as well. Uh, thank you, Toyota, for doing this. I mean, every year, the consistency, what we're doing with Velocity, what they're doing with the Toyota Festival as well. It's been fantastic for motorsports in general. Consistency is key, I must say that. Thank you very much, Toyota Gazoo Racing, for putting e-racing on the world map. Awesome, Absolutely. awesome stuff. But um, you mentioned a little bit about sim racers making their way on track. But before that, um, how does it feel to be back in a live situation. We've been going through two years fighting a pandemic. Oh, absolutely. We've been doing all online racing. You saw the racing last year was all online. So to see the boys here racing, mm. you know, with the next level rigs, Sony mo uh, monitors and consoles, it's been fantastic to see them. You know, it's, it's, you know, when you see it online, you don't quite get that feeling. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, everyone is competing on equal machinery. Ah. Because, you know, so everyone doesn't have an excuse. Um, and we really see the talent come to the fore. It's really about skills, yeah? Absolutely. All about skill, preparation, dedication and hard work. Well, talking about dedication and hard work, we speak about one of your protégés, Mr. Nakib Aslan. Ah, yeah. Yes, he is Southeast Asia's eSports champion 2022. Of course, making the transition at the same time on track with the Toyota Gazoo Racing Series and He's killing it on track as well. So what does it mean? Um, is this the new way of developing drivers? No more go-karting? Well, no, I mean, go-karting is still important. But for me, sim racing is even more important. You mentioned Nakib. Mm. There are a lot of other drivers coming up to the sim racing. Muir, uh, who's coming up in Group B, he's yeah. tested a real Formula Renault car. So it is very important, more important than go-karting. Obviously, it's nice to do both. But sim racing, we can see the drivers are more complete. Mm -hmm. You know, watch the boys, they're driving different cars. Yep. They'll be driving, driving a rally car around Goodwood later. Mm -hmm. So the drivers that do the similar ra racing are just more complete. La. More complete, yeah. Even with the GT Sport uh, platform, the realism is there. The excitement yep. is here. For those of you at home wanting to feel the same excitement, if you're a racing fan, come on down to Wanatama Shopping Complex, Centre Court, Old Wing, where the action is happening. Maybe one last question before we leave you alone, Alex. Yeah. So, so, with your experience as an F1 driver, right, what is your advice to our racers right here to be the best? Well, take part in this tournament, you know. Um, we'll have it again next year, hopefully. Um, it's incredible. We've done five years of velocity now. And really, sim racing is the way to go. It's a much cheaper way of getting into the sport. Uh -huh. We don't need fantastic rigs. Obviously, eventually you'll need fantastic rigs, but to start, Use the console, use the controller, use keyboard and mouse, mm. you know, see how see how to get into the sport, learn the basics before hopefully being able to afford these nice rigs. And then if you do well in these competitions, hopefully you can find the sponsors and get into a real race car. Excellent. You know, I've always wanted to ask this. Now I have the opportunity. You know, if there was sim racing back when you first started racing, would you be a different kind of driver? Oh, I'd be a much better driver, to be honest. I made, really? a, I made a lot of mistakes along my career. Uh -huh. And a lot of the time it's because you don't get a chance to drive a race car. Yep. You know, or no budget, no money. Lah. So if I had the sim racing when I, w w I was driving, it would have really helped my career for sure. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, what took me 30 years to learn, a lot of these guys are learning in two or three years. No way. Yeah. So no way. There's so many more shortcuts in sim racing. Because we can put Le Mans, we can put Daytona or IndyCar. Mm -hmm. You know, these guys drive so many different kinds of cars, so many different kinds of tracks yep. that they accelerate the knowledge so much faster. Excellent, excellent. Wow. Now, from the, word, uh, from the mouth of Alex Yung himself, Malaysia's first F1 driver, took him 30 years to learn the ropes and log in the hours. Now, with sim races, it's just two to three years. So it's, uh, it's a good foreboding 
for the future of motorsports. Absolutely, especially here in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have the facilities, and of course, motorsport is expensive. Absolutely. So really, this is the cheapest and most efficient way. Excellent. Thank you very much. Alex Young in the house, ladies Thank and gentlemen. You. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you. And now we've got we've got a special announcement for those of you who are here as well. Don't go away, don't go away. Especially you got a chance to win a lucky draw as well, Alex. Okay. So for those of you who are here, make your way down to our registration counter, scan the QR code, and you stand a chance to win lucky draw prizes. Every day we're giving away one iPhone 13 mini, one iPad Air per day, and an Apple Watch Series 7 per day. So you've got two to be given away today and tomorrow. Jadi kepada pengunjung-pengunjung One Utama Shopping Complex Kepada anda yang di rumah If you want to test your luck Come on down here to One Utama Shopping Complex Scan the QR code And stand the chance to win some prizes And uh, here are some test drive details Have you test driven the new Toyota Cross? Not yet, but I'm trying to see if I can get a test drive soon. Excellent, it's right outside. For those of you who want to test drive um, two cars, we've got a Corolla Cross Hybrid and a Vios that you can test drive around the mall as well. So if you're looking for a new car, this is the place to be. And so, I think I would like to say thank you very much to Mr. Alex Jung right here. Thank you so much for all you've done for these drivers. Thank you. And may you continue to serve Malaysia in your very own special way. Okay. Thank you very thank you. much, Alex. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Young in the house. Meanwhile, for those of you at home, watching the race and enjoying it from the comforts of your home, hey guys, it's much more fun right here at One Utama Shopping Complex. So we're giving away merchandises. Can I have a merchandise bag, please? so that I can uh, tell everyone what they stand a chance to win. Ah, uh, excellent. I've got my assistant over here, in Sheikh Shazwan. He's beautiful in his own special way. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, I'll be asking three simple questions. We're giving away these merchandises to you. The first person who wants to win merchandise from me, come right here on stage and answer my question, okay? Very simple, I've been spreading the gospel for the past few hours right here in Wanutamba Shopping Complex. So if you've been paying attention, you might stand a chance to win these prizes. So, can I have uh, the prizes right here? Silakan, silakan. Ah, these are some of the premium items that we shall be giving out. Ah, we've got caps and also, what are these things? Ah, it's an organizer, exclusive merchandise. And so for the first person who comes up here on stage to answer my question, will be winning these prizes. <coughs> my first question, for those of you who are here at Wan Utama, what season are we on right now? This is Toyota Kazuri Singh. Abang, mari sini abang. Silakan, silakan. What season are we on now? Saya bagi hint. Kita mula 2018. Kira, kira cepat. Hello, sir. What is your name, please? Shariman bin Abdul Razak. Encik Shariman, what season of Toyota Gazoo Racing Velocity Championship are we in now? This season is number five. Season number five is correct. Congratulations. Hadiah untuk anda. Itu dia, kesian. Bunyi flash begitu besar, orang kat rumah tak nampak. Tanya Encik Shariman. Give a round of applause to our first winner. Do we have time for another question? Do we have time for another question? We do have time for another question. So, the next person to answer. Of course, premiums are coming your way. Ladies and gentlemen, how many semi-finalists do we have today competing in Group 1 and 2? Awak angkat tangan dulu. Mari, yang pakai t-shirt brown. Brown, brown. Yang pakai t-shirt brown colour. Sila, 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 sila. How many semi-finalists do we have competing in Group B and Group B? Ah, anda nampak macam anda tahu jawapannya. Nama siapa? Zuhair Mizikri. Zuhair, ya? Yeah? Okay. Zikri. Minta maaf, sound saya rosak. Okay, how many semi-finalists do we have? 20. 20 semi-finalists! Congratulations! Silakan. Ah, nah, ambil gambar, ambil gambar, ambil gambar. Terima kasih, terima kasih Encik Zikri. We've got one more to be given away, one more to be given away. Mungkin anda mendapat peluang sekali lagi. Okay, stand by, bersedia. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this is Toyota Gazoo Racing Velocity Championships 2022. How many grand finalists are we looking for? For the 20 semi-finalists, how many grand finalists will we have? Ah, akak-akak yang pakai baju biru lengan panjang. Ah, tanya husband dia, berapa, berapa, berapa? <laughs> Silakan kak. So easy to win right here at One Utama Shopping Complex. So if you want to win some premiums right here, guys, come on down to One Utama if you're in the area. And of course, feel the action. Assalamualaikum. Nama siapa, Kak? Uh, Rasifa. Rasifa. Rasifa tahu tak berapa grand finalist kita yang kita cari besok ni? Uh, lima orang dari satu grup. Lima orang dari satu grup. Jadi kalau ada dua grup, berapa orang? Sepuluh orang. Pandai matematik dia. Yes. Congratulations. Pemenang wanita kita yang pertama. Yes. Terima kasih, terima kasih. All right. So we're going to cut off the uh, merchandising for a bit. It's time to go back to our race courses and the highlights of race two, group A. This is the semi-finals. All right. So ini dia. Kita lihat segala highlights daripada semi-finals race yang kedua. And what a race it has been, Davita. Yeah, it's been quite an interesting race, isn't it? I mean, a bit light on the action, but definitely very interesting to watch, especially knowing the results from race number one. I mean, of course, the man to watch out for in this group here is the defending champion, Dutch Ayman. And look at the amount of places he made up in the first lap itself. I mean, within the first five minutes, he's already up to P2, for, uh, starting from P10, uh, sorry, from P, uh, uh, sorry, P9. So he made up like eight places all throughout that first lap and pretty much at, uh, at a smooth sailing race all throughout. But a lot of the action that was in race number two was handily delivered by our midfield here, starting off with Danish because Warren, you know, trying to get his uh, elbows out there, trying to pass uh, Rio as well as uh, Farisman. Then we saw Farisman and uh, Kamal having uh, quite the battle here, uh, coming through Dingledale, going side by side with uh, Rio, uh, with uh, Farisman trying to attack around the outside, which is extremely, extremely difficult, but he did it so so well. Then uh, Harry Sefri Ray had been leading the race all throughout, especially since he took it at the start of the race and looked to pretty much uh, stay there quite well until uh, pit strategy came into the mix. Then, of course, Kira Lam had been fighting as well in this uh, fifth position and provided much of the uh, excitement as well for this race here, but unfortunately had dropped uh, quite a bit in the way, back here. Yeah. And this was where Kamal Ali unfortunately had his little spill there, unfortunately putting his wheels a bit too hard on the curbs, which uh, tend to be sensitive at times. It's uh, usually a, a luck of the draw sometimes whether or not your car will be stable enough to maintain itself on the curbing. And unfortunately, that time, uh, Kamal Ali was a little too unfortunate and lost a couple places thanks to that. And by the time the checkered flag came out, Taj Ayman, of course, with his brilliant undercut strategy, got himself up into first place here. Uh, we do have our official results here for Group A here. You can see the points uh, tally for this second race in particular. Touch. I'm of course taking the bulk of it at 25 points. Harry Shami in second place gets 18 points. Danish managed to get himself up in the third place. Uh, one thing to note here for the results though is a disqualification that came in for Nor Faris Man for not changing tire compounds during his mandatory pit stop. So that unfortunately is against the rules here and as a result he's been disqualified from race number two. He's not going to be getting any points from this uh, race unfortunately. Yeah and if you Absolutely. So let's have a look on the overall results there, Victor, as we are going into the next stage of our show. So there you go. In P1, we see Taj Isrin Ayman with 43 points. Mohamed Uzair on P2 with 37 points. P3 for Danish Vignesh Warren with 30 points. P4 for Rio, 22 points. Shared by Harish Shami in P5, 22 as well. P6 for Kiralam on 18 points. P7, uh, 12 points, which, where we see Mohamed Kamal. And P8 is going to be Ahmad Siddiq with 12 points as well. P9, Noor Farisman in uh, two points only. We saw the disqualification in this race too. And last but not least, we have Chandra Merli in P10 with only two points as well. So that is the overall results, especially for this group.
group there, Victor. Yeah, so Tasha Ayman having a five-point lead ahead with Zyra is going to keep things very, very tight, I think, coming into races three and four, because five points is not a lot. I mean, that's basically about one uh, position uh, away from really uh, with Zyra being able to contest him for the championship lead here uh, for Group A specifically. But then for the other guys, especially those guys who are just on the verge of getting into the fifth place there, I think Kira Lam is only about four points away from uh, tying up together to make it 22 points, which is what the points uh, that are being held by our fourth place and fifth place guys in Group A right now. So you can see that the margins so, so tight. So even just making up some good places here in races three and four, especially for these guys who are vying to get into the top five, it's going to go a long, long way uh, for their chances getting into the Grand Finals. Yeah, I mean, sama seperti apa Zaire mengatakan tadi lah. It's going to be a very tight race. Satu... Uh Perlumbaan yang agak sengit sebenarnya. So, memang terbuka kepada anyone actually. But at this point, uh, especially in the leaderboards, di dalam point system, nampaknya banyak perubahan yang telah pun berlaku. But let's hope that, Victor, uh, there has, there's going to be any any sorts of positivities that might come in race 3 and race 4. So, kita akan bersama dengan Nas. So, Nas, my brother, take it away again. We'll see you in a very, very short while. Excellent. We'll see you very, very soon, Victor and Matthew. Uh, Matthew's Isaac. Wow, you guys are doing a sterling job so far, keeping the audience informed of what's happening on the virtual track. Group A, race one and two, it's over. And so it's time for our second set of semi-finalists. Group B, 10 races all together to take their places and bring glory to themselves. So it's race one for Group B. Let's invite them on stage right here, right now. Kepada anda yang ada bersama-sama kita di Warung Utama, berikan mereka tepukan yang gemuruh. Let's invite our first racer from Group B from Selangor. Last year's Toyota Gazoo Racing Velocity Championship. First runner-up, Muhammad Iqbal Sojay. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing last year's semi-finalist, Go Yi Ying! Well done, our next semi-finalist, Izam Adli from Slago! Also introducing last year's semi-finalist, Putra Zwira Bin Sahaza! Ladies and gentlemen, introducing new semi-finalists, Akil Saufi bin Azli Saufi. Next up, let's welcome our next racer, Chong Kai Chang from Selangor. Let's invite another experienced racer, Mio Mohamed Afis bin Mio Labude. Ladies and gentlemen, our next racer is from Pahang. Put your hands together for Fakrul Shameh Ben Shariman. Our next racer is a newcomer, all the way from Malacca. Don't mess with Malacca. Muhammad Hakim Ben Suhaime. And our final racer from Kuala Lumpur, Muhammad Juwaini Ben Muhammad Johari. Ladies and gentlemen, those are our 10 racers for Group B and they'll be going through race 1 and race 2, Rans Hatch, forward and of course, they'll be going through a reverse grid as well. Garner as many points as possible. So who do we watch out for in Group B? Of course, all eyes are on Muhammad Iqbal bin Ahmad Suji. No pressure bro, no pressure. Of course, he was last season's Toyota Gazoo Racing Velocity Championship uh, runner-up. So there's uh, lots of expectation for Iqbal uh, bin Ahmad Suji to give a really, really good competition for Taj Ayman, our defending champion right here. And so, ladies and gentlemen, our racers are already in their positions. And so, ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at the race format. Over to you guys. 
Alright, so ini dia race format untuk hari ini. So di dalam semifinals race yang pertama di dalam uh, Group B especially. So 5 minutes qualifying dan 15 minit untuk sprint race. Point sama seperti yang kita lihat. Tempat pertama akan membawa pulang 25 point. 18 point untuk P kedua. P ketiga 15. P keempat 12. P kelima 10. Oh, nampaknya <laughs> the screen is off. Okay, well, got it back. back. Okay, okay. We're back again. So, tempat ke-6, uh, 8 mata. Tempat ke-7, 6 mata. Dan tempat ke-8, 4 mata. Tempat ke-9, 2 mata. Dan tempat ke-10, 1 mata sahaja. And when it comes to the race lengths, 15 minutes, of course, for um, lots of things, especially like how we saw from race 1 there, Victor. Yeah, it's going to be a 15-minute sprint uh, race from yeah. start to finish here. Five minutes for them to qualify for the grid positions. Uh, one thing that's going to be a bit different uh, in the variables compared to Group A here is going to be the tire and fuel settings uh, coming into uh, this first race here. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about that when we get into uh, the race itself. So this is going to be race number one. Race number two is going to be a feature race, 30 minutes long with a reverse grid. So they're going to take the starting position based upon the results of the first race to determine the starting grid for the second race where uh, it's going to be reversed. It's going to be the fastest guys at the back, the slowest guys in front. Lots of overtaking to be expected, especially in those opening laps. And definitely for the guys who are vying to get into the top five, this is going to be the best opportunity for them to make up a lot of points. So uh, this is, a, of course, a little bit of recap, you know, naturally because we are moving into our second group here, but it's still going to be racing on the same track. They're going to be racing using the same car as well, as we will see later on as we uh, head over to have a look at the car specs and the track, especially. It's still going to be on Brands Hatch here, ladies and gentlemen. It is the legendary Grand Prix track. It hosted the British Grand Prix back in the 70s. And today, in the Velocity Esports Championship, it's going to play host to our first race for Group B as well as Group A as well, if you guys missed the festivities that happened earlier today. So it's going to be uh, nine total corners here a very short track it takes about one and a half minutes to get a lap around here especially with the cars that the competitors are going to be driving here today uh, lots of a uh, couple of good places to make passes but for the most part cars are going so so fast that sometimes it can be a bit impossible to find a way past unless you have a huge speed differential so let's go ahead and have a look at the weapon of choice the toyota sfr this is a racing concept version of the S, uh, of sfr are, and basically it's been souped up in every single way you can think of. It's got aerodynamics, it's got lots of power under the hood, and it's extremely, extremely light here, coming in at only 1.1 tons, so you know it's a purebred racing machine that's going to be the perfect tool of the trade here for our sim drivers. Yeah, so itu adalah car setup, track setup, dan pelbagai setup yang kita lihat di dalam segala race yang akan datang tak lama lagi. Tapi, ramai yang tanya, apakah price pool kita? Let's check out our prize pool, especially for the race. So there you go. Tempat pertama akan membawa pulang RM RM20,000. Tempat kedua dengan RM10,000. Tempat ketiga RM7,000. Tempat keempat membawa pulang RM5,500. Tempat kelima RM4,500. Tempat keenam RM4,000. Tempat ketujuh RM3,500. Tempat kelapan RM3,000. Tempat kesembilan RM2,500. Tempat ke-10 RM2,000. Dan tempat ke-11 hingga tempat ke-20 akan membawa pulang RM500. So that is the entire price pool untuk race uh, championship kita untuk musim ini, Victor. Yeah, and again, it's all going to be about your performance during, during the race, yeah. isn't it? I mean, the more places you can make up, the higher you get yourself up there, the more money you potentially will be coming home with. But even if you don't make it to the grand finals, you're still going to be coming home with 500 ringgit in the hand. So, you know, if anything else, you know, even if you don't get that result you're looking for today, at least you're going to be having lots of fun here at this on-ground event because it's not every day that you're going to have the top 20 Malaysian sim drivers in one place here just basically to hang out and to compete against each other, right? Absolutely, man. So especially kalau kita lihat di dalam Group B, kan, Victor, uh, 10 pelumba kita yang cukup hebat, kita ada dan nama-nama yang gergasi seperti uh, Iqbal, Suji and the rest. But we have two young racers over here. Hmm. Akil Saufi dan juga uh, Muhammad Hakim. Hmm. 
Yes. Yeah. So both of them are 19 years old, and they are the youngest in this group B. Uh, I believe there's one even younger, No Farisman, in Group A is actually 17 years old. Yeah. So it's always, it's always been an interesting mix, you know, when you ever look in the sim racing world, because it's always uh, you have your longtime veterans, like for example, Kira Lam in Group A. He's been racing for uh, 25 years inside the simulators. But then you also have uh, young young fellas like uh, these, 19, 20 years old, and some of them you. you literally having only just started sim racing maybe a couple of years ago and and they're still going to be up here mixing it up together with like long time uh, competitors like Iqbal Suji so Iqbal Suji uh, he definitely is going to be one of the favorites to watch out for in group B because uh, last year he only came in uh, in the runner up just behind touch Ayman you know and the thing is that both of them have been so neck to neck that it could literally been either one's championship of course last year it went touch Ayman's way and I think for Iqbal Suji, he's hoping things will turn out a little bit more his way, especially in 2022. Yeah, so that is the semi-finalist in this Group B. Uh, we have a repeat again where we see Iqbal Suji, Goyi Ying, Itzam Atli, Putra Zvira, Akil Safi, Chong Kai Chan, uh, Mio Hafiz, Fakrol uh, Shamir, Muhammad Hakim and also Muhammad Juwaidi, Muhammad Johari. So these are the last 10 races, especially in the semi-finals. Uh, group B, let's see what things are be going on, especially in this Group B, but I'm very sure that, Victor, they are going to put on a great, great fight. I mean, given the fact that a lot of these guys have raced in other series here besides the Lossy Championship, I mean, we have some guys who are finalists when it comes to the Michelin, uh, Michelin Virtual Race Series in 2021. I mean, uh, Go, uh, Chong Kai Chang, you know, he uh, ended up top of his group uh, when he came to the quarterfinals. He comes here uh, in, uh, also carrying the title of second place in the Michelin Virtual Race Series. So a lot of these guys are very decorated. I think the most decorated here is probably, uh, you know, aside from Iqbal Suji, it's probably me or Muhammad Hafiz. You know, again, one of those longtime veterans who have been racing for a decade, practically a decade when it comes to sim racing. And Mior in particular has uh, experienced a lot of early success. In 2019, he was the e-racing Grand Prix champion. That was also in Gran Turismo. So he pretty much made his mark in this very game itself. But then since then, you know, when it came to the Velocity Championships, it's a truly a testament as well to how competitive this championship is. Uh, since that point in 2019, he's been struggling really to try to find a good result in this game because everyone else is basically caught up, is really, you know, uh, taking this game to a whole new level than when he started. So, you know, it, it just goes to show how things have evolved over the years here, you know, as uh, time goes on, especially with this championship having been run for five years, we've seen, you know, a lot of these young bloods uh, come up and really uh, show that they're not only just as capable as the veteran drivers here, but sometimes even beating them outright. Oh, so, we have seen that a few times. <laughs> well, that's the thing. That really goes to show where the future lies when it comes to motorsports here in Malaysia, right? Yeah. I mean, even as Alex Young said, that now it's becoming increasingly clear that uh, sim racing as a tool for uh, driver training has been so invaluable for the motorsports scene now because a lot of drivers, especially the ones who are competing at the highest level when it comes to real motorsports here, you know, racing in Sepang, some of them literally get their start through competitions like this, uh, get their start through sim racing tournaments, a small community ones even, and that's where they kind of like start the, the beginnings of the craft, you know, they learn so much more uh, in these virtual environments compared to uh, coming into real life that by the time they actually, you know, have the opportunity to jump into real life, it feels like, you know, like, uh, like a glove, uh, fitting like a glove practically when they get into that seat because they know exactly what to do. They've been here before, just maybe in a virtual context, but now that they're yeah. in the real world, they can show that the skills that they learned, you know, driving those sims still apply and it still is able to beat the very best Definitely. on the track. Absolutely, man, absolutely. I mean, like, we have seen a uh, few of the races, especially having real-life experience as well. So, I think it is, uh, how do I say, it's like we're entering the future, you know, we're entering the future where both of them are going to collide someday, and man, this is going to open so much of opportunities for young uh, driver enthusiasts as well who wants to be a racer and of course they might not have the platform to get into actual racing immediately but why not they can start over especially in a simu simulation I mean the thing is yeah. the cost wise like there's literally no contest like yes. to build your own like uh, track car itself you know it can cost in the tens uh, maybe, maybe even a hundred thousand you know in, at maximum but then a sim rig you know even at the most 
most expensive is within the 10,000 ringgit range. And if you even like uh, talk about a rig like this, it's even cheaper than some of the most professional rigs out there. So it looks like we're already looking at qualifying starting now for Group B, as I was explaining just now. This is going to be uh, Group B's first chance now to go ahead and set their times to set the tone very much for these couple of races that we're going to be running through. Yeah, so this is the uh, qualifying. So let's see uh, who's going to be getting the best time to uh, especially put themselves in the best position in the great start, of course. So we have interesting races, especially in Group B. So uh, it is pretty much open for anyone to make a name, especially in this race. So I'm really looking forward to it. But yeah, man, who do you think like um, your racer to watch over here? Well, I'm going to be watching Iqbal Suji because he's on the screen right now. And uh, he's uh, using, he was towing right behind Momo Jawaidi, but now he's decided to just overtake him here to go ahead and get his flying lap uh, sorted. Uh, another person that I want to kind of see, uh, especially between these two guys here, Mio Hafiz and uh, Wayne Go. Now, Wayne is uh, tucking himself kind of behind where Mio Hafiz is. So by the time they get to the line, they're going to be starting a flying lap together. And I wonder if Wayne is thinking about Len, uh, thinking about stealing some of the slipstream of a Mio Hafiz car. Now, of course, they're a little bit too far away for them to do that at this point now. So Go, uh, Wayne has actually backed up a little bit, gave Mio Hafiz a little bit of space, and, it, uh, and more importantly, uh, gave himself some track space uh, in order to just fully uh, commit to a flying lap here and get a little bit squirrely as he comes into Druids, though. That's not exactly the way you want to uh, attack that corner. You want to uh, ensure the car is very neutral and very smooth uh, through a fast track like this, but Wayne is just literally eating up curbs on the inside, swinging his car wildly here. <laughs> I mean, he is, he's literally pushing that car right now. Yeah, go Wayne, especially we, we have seen him race uh, throughout many, many seasons. He's a fantastic driver. But another person that I really want to have my eyes on is going to be uh, Mio Hafiz there, man. Yeah, I mean, again, you know, he being the champion back in 2019 uh, in Gran Turismo, like one of the first, uh, one of the early Gran Turismo tournaments here, besides the Velocity Championship, you know, he has a lot to live up to, you know, especially being a veteran of this uh, sport, uh, having raced uh, for a very, very long time, even prior to coming to this championship. And he's definitely also had some actual uh, real experience having driven uh, the Formula Renault car in a test drive before. So he knows exactly uh, what it's like to drive a car in real life and also how to drive uh, extremely well when it comes to the Sims. So with the, that combination, you think that he's going to have a lot of success, right? Well, unfortunately, for the last couple of years, it's not really been working out that well for him because he did manage to get a runner up in the 2018 edition of the vlog. Uh, Lost the Esports Championship, that was the first year that we uh, ran this. And by 2019, the only match to uh, get up to fourth place. So his results have been dropping, dropping consistently uh, at that point now. So after, you know, after everything that's happened over the last couple of years now, he's coming back into the Velocity uh, Championships here. And I, I'm going to be excited to see whether or not he's going to uh, be able to make things a little bit better for himself this time around. Or, you know, maybe things are going to be very different here, especially with the intense competition, especially from the youngsters that we're seeing here in this Velocity Esports Championship. Yeah, so nampaknya ada lebih kurang satu minit saja yang berbaki di dalam qualifying session kami and nampaknya so far, we see the fastest lap dipegang oleh uh, Kai Chang dengan 1.28.474 That is nearly what we saw from uh, the man who was on his top of his form in Group A, that is Taj Aiman there, Victor. I mean, John Kai Chang was uh, top of his group in Group D and mm -hmm. in fact, you know, he had been giving Muir the run of his uh, uh, run for his money there by tying himself in points there. I mean, both of them were the top in uh, Group D itself. And Kai Chang now having taken the lead here, especially ahead of uh, uh, Iqbal Suji in, in, the, in terms of the time attack here, this is going to be an interesting development. I mean, uh, I wonder if Iqbal is going to be able to uh, regain that provisional pole uh, 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 rather, uh, take the provisional pole away from Kai Chang by the time we get uh, towards the end of this qualifying session, which, by the way, is already ending now. The timer has just 
just about ended. So this is going to be a last chance here for Kai Chan to try to improve its time. Last time he said a 128.474. What's he going to be able to do when he comes across the line soon? But also, more importantly, what is Iqbal Suji going to be able to do? Is he going to be able to beat Kai Chan's time? Now, Kai Chan comes across the line there, still maintains his time here. Unfortunately, can't quite beat his previous best. Iqbal Suji is going to be coming around. Uh, yeah, actually, he's just only started getting into uh, the just at the end of Hawthorne Strait, not coming through Dingle Dell. And uh, unfortunately, it's going to be a while before we're going to be able to see his fastest time. But last time around, he did make, make it in 128.7. So he has about three tens to find somewhere in this track here in order to try to beat Kai Chang's time. Uh, Putra's Wira is actually putting himself up pretty well as well. He's already in third uh, place provisionally right now. And he's put himself ahead of Wingo, ahead of Mio Hafiz. That's already two really good drivers here that Putra has just uh, shown up to. Yeah, satu uh, aksi yang cukup baik yang kita lihat daripada para pelumba kita, especially the top five. So, nampaknya it has been a fantastic timing yang kita lihat daripada Kai Chang. Tetapi Iqbal Suji as well hmm. in P2 now, man, Victor. In P2, but yeah. uh, again, did not manage to beat Kai Chang's time. So Kai Chang still maintains provisional pole. Wayne Go comes across the line, cannot improve his time either. Akiel Salfi has come, uh, come through as well. He stays in P6. Mio Hafiz is currently in P5. Hakim has come through and only manages a ninth best uh, start here. Shamir comes through. He is unfortunately uh, at, at 10. That's going to be at the back of the grid, absolutely. So Chong Kai Chang comes in in pole position for race one of group B. Yeah, this is going to be very interesting to watch. But now, it's go time, Davita. Yeah, everyone's all lined up. Everyone's waiting for the start. I didn't quite mention what the tire and fuel balloting is. Uh, right now, for Group B Sprint, it's going to be two times simulation rate for tires, two times simulation rate for fuel. Quite similar-ish to our first sprint race, but with a little bit more fuel burn, I think the cars are going to be a little bit lighter compared to the Group A guys. But nevertheless, here we go. Race number one of Group B. A good start there for Kai Chan to try to keep himself ahead of Iqbal Suji. Iqbal's going to try himself around the uh, outside here, weaving a little bit there to get a little bit more heat to his tires but can't quite uh, find a way past Kai Chan. Now he's going to be challenged here by Azwira who's attempting to get it around the inside through Druids here and Azwira does take away P2 there. Iqbal Suji is going to have to go the long way around, tries to find a way to cut around the outside through the bend but uh, Mio Hub has already beaten him to the chase though. Getting himself up into P3 and now trying to mix it up here with Azwira to try to battle for it at P2. Now coming up to Surtees, they're all going single file line here. Things are starting to settle down a little Bit, but it's still plenty of opportunity, especially on this back straight. Extremely long, even longer than the main straight here at Brands Hatch. This is going to be the best place to get some drafting done. Shamir, it looks like he's going to be uh, getting a battle against ninth place. Iqbal Suji tries to get a draft off of Mior, but can't quite get the defeat differential to battle for that third place. But Mior, conversely, is sticking very close to Putra Azwira, and that's allowing Mior now to have a very comfortable draft as it comes through Dingle Dell. Yeah, man, to watch out is going to be Mior Hafiz so far. Tetapi kita tunggu dah adakah. And it's also movement, but so far this line is going to be very, very interesting to watch. Dari pada P2 hingga ke P5 kita lihat. Dan kita tunggu dan lihat bagaimana di dalam Sleko yang akan itu Sleko yang kesembilan, dah Victor. So this is the moment to see. And it's also movement. Aswira masih lagi berada dalam P2. Dan although we saw little bit of movement dari pada Mio Hafiz, but then Mio Hafiz masih lagi dinafikan oleh Aswira dan kita terus saja ke Sleko yang pertama. Look at the defense. Mio Hafiz trying to defend very, very hard now against Iqbal Suji successfully maintains his place but then only barely though as he gets a little bit squirrely onto the onto the grass uh, Wayne goes now uh, nipping at the heels at Iqbal Suji oh, and nice. that actually gives Iqbal Suji now an opportunity here to look around the inside he's gonna, gonna, gonna be cut around the uh, inside of the next turn though as Mio Hafiz takes his place back at Graham Hill and maintains himself third place but this battle is not over yet three and four now coming towards oh. the 30s here Iqbal Suji tucked up behind Mio Hafiz this is going to be a long train now coming towards the Hawthorne Strait and Iqbal has a draft here. Is he going to be able to find a way to come towards a very fast section of Brands Hatch? Mior Hafiz now is going to have to position his car absolutely right on the racing line here to have any hope of defending against Iqbal Suji and he has done so perfectly. Yeah, perfectly. And sekarang ini kita lihat di dalam P4 masih lagi kita lihat Iqbal Suji mengikuti Mior Hafiz dan kita terus ke Sleko yang ketujuh. I can't 
starting to feel there might be a movement over here there, Victor. By looking at the time gap, there's just 0 0.1 actually. And let's see if there's going to be any sorts of battle. So, masih lagi kita lihat tekanan diberikan oleh Iqbal Suji kepada Mior Hafiz. Mior Hafiz masih lagi compose saja di hadapan. Dan kita lihat Azwira di dalam P kedua Iqbal Suji. Dekat lagi sekarang ni daripada what we saw yep. earlier sekarang ni. But look at maybe inside. right now. Dan kita lihat Iqbal Suji cuba untuk bertahankan. Tetapi masih lagi Mior Hafiz berada di hadapan. Dan kita terus ke dalam seleko yang pertama. Dalam kalisan ke dalam Iqbal Suji. Dan Iqbal Suji tidak juga untuk nampaknya memintas beliau. Oh, the thing is that uh, Mior had to leave the space. And Iqbal had those only barely enough room there to keep his car on the track. But unfortunately, couldn't quite find the speed to turn one. So he's still back in P4 right now. Mior Hafez is still maintaining his third position now. But he really wants to try to catch it as Wira. But all this defending against Iqbal Suji has been so, so tough for Mior. I mean, Iqbal has been turning that pressure up to 11 here by keeping himself within three tens, two tens behind Mior Hafiz. So that means that even a slight differential in the line between these two guys is going to mean everything on the overtakes. Now, Izzam is, uh, I think he just got passed by Akiel Salfi, who is now in the sixth place. Izzam in seventh. And uh, they're going to be tucking behind each other. True Dingle Dell here. Not much uh, he can do about that. Unfortunately, once you're on the racing line, true this very fast section, it can be very, very difficult for you to actually find a way past. So oh, your man. best bet is just tuck up behind, <laughs> just like the way Dick Ball's doing. Look at this. He's, He's literally no touching the rear bumper. Mior true that slow corner there. And it just goes to show how the level of pressure the Egg Ball is just putting onto Mior, just constantly hounding him on, hoping that somewhere, somehow, that Mior will crack. But again, we're talking about one of the most experienced drivers Definitely. here in the VOS Championship. So it's not going to be that easy to catch Mior Hafiz napping. Yeah, penuh dengan pengalaman Aito Mior Hafiz sekarang ini. Tetapi Iqbal Suji, tekanan itu pasti datangnya daripada beliau. Dan masih lagi kita lihat Iqbal Suji cuba untuk melihat any sorts of movement daripada Mior Hafiz untuk melakukan kesilapan. But so far, I can see Mior, as what you said this just now, Victor, he's very, very composed. Maybe experience is playing uh, a big role, a big advantage on him, but you cannot discount Iqbal Suji, especially when he's coming at the back. Yeah, the thing is that Mior has already caught out of Putra yeah. Azwira, so not only is Azwira providing a toe now to Mior, but we toe, uh, with Mior providing the toe to Iqbal, he's going to have an opportunity to uh, maybe uh, make this into a three-way battle between them. But speaking of three-way battles here, look at this little bit of a mix right now. Izzam now trying to get past Akiel, still couldn't quite find a way through but with Wayne Go already being caught up here by Ak Akiel, this could oh, be a three-way no. battle for fifth. But Akiel keeps uh, Itzam all the way behind her, not leaving, leaving any room at all for Itzam to exploit through the fast corners here. So just like before, as long as you're on the racing line, it's so easy to defend through these fast parts of Brands Hatch. So your best bet is to just stay as close to them as possible as, as like Itzam is done. And then hopefully find a way through on the outside, which Itzam still is able to do against Akiel. Side by side now, I think Akil has lost his place here as Izzam moves up a little bit, but no, they're still side by side coming through the Jim Clark curve. Now, Izzam did get a much better exit, and Akil had to back off a little bit less. He ends out outside the track, so now he is down into uh, eighth place here as Shamir has actually tucked in behind where Izzam is and actually gained a place as a result. Nampaknya pertarungan ini belum lagi tamat Victor antara Mio dan juga Iqbal Suji. Let's see what we can see daripada Sleko yang ketiga sekarang ini. Masih lagi kita lihat Mio dan Hafiz berada di dalam P yang kedua. Iqbal Suji menunggu sahaja kesilapan daripada Mio sekarang ini. But at this moment, Mio once he's in the front there, he just know what he's doing there Victor. And look at how he closes the gap there, denying the opportunities for Iqbal Suji. But Iqbal Suji is just trying to keep himself right behind him, not to lose any sorts of gaps. And let's see from this straight all the way to turn number five. Yeah, I mean, they managed to get past Azwira, it yes. looked like, because Azwira was in P2, now he's down to P4, so Iqbal must have followed behind Mior uh, as soon as he got past Butra. So Iqbal continuing to keep that pressure going again, just keeping like that one-tenth of a second behind Mior, just constantly, uh, we've been touching range of his bumper there. In fact, somebody's again. breaking points, again. he literally nudges him in the back, so that's just adding even more pressure to Mior, because uh, sometimes, you know, those uh, little taps there uh, can put 
potentially upset the balance of your car, especially through those breaking points there. So that's just making things a little bit difficult for Muir Hafiz. And it's definitely Iqbal telling Muir that, hey, I'm a little bit faster through some of these parts, man. So, you know, if you're not too careful uh, at some of these points, if you miss your breaking point or you slip up, I'm going to eat you up as he tries to. Having a look on the inside here, going to his turn one. Iqbal Suji has a good line here, but oh, he touches the ground a little oh, no. bit. He unfortunately sideswipes Muir Hafiz a little, a, a little, but still manages to maintain control and still stays in third place. But now this has opened a door for Futura Azwira to maybe uh, get into the mix here because Azwira caught up to Iqbal Suji as he attempts to regain control of his car. So Muir now having a slightly more comfortable cap compared to before. I mean, we say slightly, but we're yeah. literally looking at a difference of three tens, four tens than before here to Iqbal Suji. But uh, now it looks like Iqbal has already covered his place pretty well by the time to get to the back straight. So it looks like this three-way battle will still continue. Yeah, lebih kurang di dalam enam minit saja yang berbaki di dalam perlumbaan ini kita on board bersama dengan Putra Azwira yang berada di dalam P yang keempat dan beliau misinya adalah untuk mengejar Iqbal Suji yang berada di hadapan di dalam P ketiga tetapi battle itu masih lagi belum tamat nampaknya there is not much of a drastic changes walaupun kita lihat Iqbal Suji ada juga sedikit detik-detik beliau untuk memintas Mior Hafiz tetapi Mior Hafiz as usual very experienced driver dan pernah uh, melalui pelbagai cabaran sebelum ini and he is keeping a very calm head dan kita terus ke dalam Sleko yang ke-9 especially balik bila kita lihat di dalam P pertama adalah Kai Chang. Yeah, the thing is that what Mio would love more than anything else is to focus on his race with Chong Kai yeah. Chang, but at the moment just trying to keep himself ahead of Iqbal Suji uh, means that most of his focus is uh, exactly behind him, so that's not really giving him a lot of like uh, breathing room in order to try to catch up to the current leaders because he's literally trying to fight for the second position to stay ahead of Iqbal uh, throughout these first two races. So Mio right now, you know, just absolutely defending very, very well there, and he has basically keep his car on the racing line at all times here because if he just gives a little bit of a gap, a little bit of a nudge or a squeeze somewhere that Iqbal can exploit it's going to be all game oh, over no. so like I said, you know, just a little chance Iqbal Suji might be able to eat it up and he's going to be going absolute top speed now towards Hawthorne and Iqbal does take the inside though, so Mior, he's going to try to attack on the exit but unfortunately tucks in behind so it's already Iqbal Suji into P2 here, Mior Hafiz now loses a place, tries to gain it back, but now they're at a section where it's a little bit too hard to overtake. Yeah, dan akhirnya kita lihat Iqbal Suji dapat pun memintas Mior Hafiz dan meletakkan beliau di dalam P kedua sekarang ni dan misi adalah untuk mengejar Kai Chang yang berada jauh di hadapan dengan tiga saat sebenarnya. And at this moment kita lihat Mior Hafiz masih lagi belum give up daripada pertarungan ini dan sekarang beliau cuba mengejar balik Iqbal Suji dan mendapat Dapatkan uh, position beliau sekarang ni Putra Azwira di dalam P ke-4 Dan kalau kita lihat di dalam P ke-5 Datuk kepada Goh Yi Ying Dan P ke-6 untuk Syamir P ke-7 untuk Akil Saifui P ke-8 untuk Hakim Dan ini dia pertarungan di dalam P ke-6 antara Akil dan juga Syamir Diikuti oleh Hakim di dalam P ke-8 Dan bagaimana kita akan lihat Akil cuba untuk melakukan sedikit gerakan Daripada garisan yang ke dalam sekarang ni Dan masuk ke dalam Sleko yang ketiga Syamir masih lagi mempertahankan posisi beliau Dan juga menafikan gerakan-gerakan datangnya daripada Akil Safwi But this is a long 3 minutes to go there Victor yeah, It's going to be a long 3 minutes especially for Syamir You know, he only started sim racing back in 2019 So he's one of the run a really fresh faces coming into the Velocity Championships and so far so good I mean he's managed to make his way up to 6th place there uh, from 10th uh, and that's putting himself ahead of Akil Salfi but now the true test here is how well can Shamir defend yes. especially with a faster guy behind him because Akil is just constantly trying to poke holes through his defense they're trying to uh, force uh, uh, force him into an error or uh, force a uh, position that allows him to make an overtake but uh, at the moment Moment though it looks like Shamir is doing quite well he's still able to stay in position for now and Akio is just going to continue to try to find some way through in the meantime Mior and uh, Iqbal uh, you can see how things are quite a bit different once the position switch around like previously yeah. Iqbal was able to keep within a tenth or two tenths uh, behind Mior Hafiz now that Mior is uh, behind Iqbal he's only been able to muster it at most probably about four tenths maybe even three tenths at certain points but Mior uh, certainly isn't uh, able to uh, 
uh, it's certainly keeping a much bigger gap compared to what Iqbal was doing onto him, which tells me that Iqbal probably still has a lot more potential performance left in his uh, in his car here that he's not really uh, using to the fullest yet. But at least now that has already gotten past uh, Mior Hafiz, that has got a clear track in front of him. Perhaps this is going to be time now for Iqbal to try to push a little bit harder and see whether he can catch up to Kai Chang in the front. Yeah, I won't deny that. I really love the rivalry, especially from Iqbal Suji and also Mio Hafiz. But at this moment, kita lihat daripada uh, battle untuk P kelima sekarang ni, Akil Safi sekarang ni memegang kepada posisi nombor lima dan diikuti oleh Shamir di belakang dengan P ke enam dan P ke tujuh adalah untuk Hakim sekarang ni. Although, yes, of course, they're pretty much new and they are young racers di dalam uh, race yang uh, group B sekarang ni. But this is going to be adding a lots of experience to their backs. But uh, let's see, in this final two minutes to go, is that going to be any sorts of drastic changes? Yeah, remember, Akhil actually was be, uh, behind Shamir early on, so it looks like he's already gotten past Shamir here to take fifth place. And now Hakim is nip nipping on the heels of our young driver here, so Shamir is going to have to do absolutely everything he can to defend. Oh, so I no. see that. It looks like he might just opened up the inside there as we cut away to Kai Chang in a moment. I want to see <laughs> what happened between Shamir and uh, Hakim. It looks like Shamir, uh, he still managed to keep himself in front of Hakim, and Hakim is going to try it attack him again on the first turn and lay on the inside he, he puts his elbows out there touching the rear wheel there i think that might be a bit marginal there if uh if shamir decides to protest it but come to druids though hakim outbreaks shamir takes away sixth position here and shamir drops to seven yeah gerakan yang sangat baik daripada hakim sekarang ni untuk memintas shamir yang berada di dalam p ke tujuh is that going to be any sorts of redemption datang daripada Shamir? Kita tunggu dan lihat di dalam Sleko yang keempat sekarang ini. Tapi masih lagi kita lihat Hakim berada di dalam P ke-6. Shamir cuba untuk mendekati beliau. Tetapi at this moment, Hakim is doing an absolute perfect work. And kita tunggu dan lihat what is going to be happening in this turn number 5 as we are coming down over here. But man, 30 seconds to go there, Victor. Yeah, I mean, I'm always so worried like watching these guys dip the tires into the grass yeah. right on the curbs here because remember what happened to Kamal Ali in the in the second race? Like, he literally only touched the curb a little bit on his rear tire and that sent him into a spin. Uh, but then these guys, you know, especially on this really fast part of the track here, you know, you literally need to maximize your entry speed, your uh, momentum throughout the corner as well as your exit here. So it's going to be absolutely blistering fast through all three parts of that corner corner and pretty much that means that you know when you're in that the uh, second sector you're pretty much going flat out that's why it's so hard to overtake right like when your opponent's going like fully uh, pedal to the metal it's so so hard uh, for you to find any speed differential during that section because there's no braking involved so it's really only where like the the main straight starts to happen or literally the first sector which is going to be the slowest sector especially with druids uh, leading to graham and then certes those are like the three slowest corners Corners on this track here, and that's the only place we may able to see people um, actually make passes. Uh, Muir Hafiz went a little bit too wide there, it looks like, and ate a lot of grass, and that's costing him time here against Iqbal Suji. And you can see, even on the main straight, he's dropped like a tenth of a second all throughout that, just thanks to just dipping himself into the grass a little bit too much. So, yeah, that's the costly uh, result of making a minor mistake like that. Yeah, so jadi kita lihat di dalam P yang pertama, the race leader, iaitu Chong Kai Chang yang masih lagi berada di hadapan. Nampaknya he's going on a long Saturday drive. Nobody around him, although uh, Iqbal Suji is just two, se two uh, seconds right behind him. But then that is a long way for him to catch up as he is coming down to the jacket flags. So ini dia. The main man in front, Aitu Chong Kai Chang, yang akan jadi pemenang di dalam race ini. And what a race it has been untuk Chong Kai Chang, diikuti oleh Iqbal Suji dan P ketiga untuk Mior Hafiz. And what a race that we are having in our hands, man. This battle, Iqbal Suji and Mior has been entertaining to watch. Oh yeah, I mean they've been pushing each other so so hard, just like Taj Ayman and uh, Muzair in the first group here, so I'm expecting they're going to continue this pattern yeah. going into the second race very very soon, but it's great to see that uh, Kai Chang actually had a massively massively good <laughs> race here. I mean not only qualify in that pole position yeah, ahead man. of our uh, Iqbal Suji, uh, our favorite 
here, Iqbal Suji, but it's also went on to convert that into a race win here. So he's absolutely uh, getting a, uh, a very good spot here and potentially could be seeing him uh, very far into the grand finals. Oh man, I'm, <laughs> I, I can really say that the battle has been so, so entertaining, especially in this race. In this group being, like, like we actually predicted that Victor, group B is going to be very interesting to watch, especially these races giving their hearts and souls out on the track. So we are definitely guaranteed with so much of action. So I'm really looking forward for the next race. But at this moment, this is the results. Yeah, Akiel Salfi is in fifth place in the moment. Uh, one of the most uh, coveted spots, I would feel. And you can see, uh, judging from the three-way battle he had with Hakim and Shamir, it was definitely a very hard-fought P5 there for Akiel. And I'm very interested to see how it's going to turn out in race two, because uh, in that situation, Shamir is going to be starting in front, Hakim uh, right behind him, and Akiel uh, right behind the two. Uh, and remember, it was Shamir who was leading this like uh, battle uh, before Akiel and Hakim managed to get past him. So I wonder if he's going to be able to uh, take any heat or any lessons here from race one and carry them forward into race two here. Because, you know, remember, it's going to be the top five in the championship uh, for this group that will be making it into the grand finals here. So finishing in that fifth spot, very, very crucial for those guys who just want to be able to get that final slot into the Grand Finals. Yeah, I mean, it's a long way to go for them, but it's a perfect start for them. Yeah. So, yeah, it, in any case, as we go uh, into our next race here, like I said, I'm, I'm going to be very excited to see how the reverse grid is going to change yes. things up. And given the, you know, uh, given that Muir is ab actually able to put himself in third place here, I think he's going to be putting up a good show, I hope, coming into this uh, race here. Because you know, in, in ERGP, he was the guy, basically. Yeah, he'll be man. taking everyone from the back of the grid, getting himself into the front. And I just want to see whether or not he'll be able to repeat that same level of performance here to Today in 2022. Oh, that's the expectations right now, Victor. But at this moment, I guess we will be having a little bit of a. Uh, how do I say this? It's like a little bit of the um, guidance from one of the best races in Malaysia. That is going to be Tunku Jan. So let's see this from them. Tunku Jan. Hi, I'm Tegu Jan Le, Toyota Gazoo Racing Ambassador and professional race car driver. We're going to talk about one Toyota model that's very close to my heart, which is the Toyota GR86 RZ. This is the designated car for our quarterfinals, and here's why it's so special. Our quarterfinalists will be piloting the all new GR86 RZ around a returning fan favorite circuit, Trial Mountain. This classic circuit is renowned for its undulations and technical corners that would suit the GR86 nimble handling. So some unique points about the new GR86, it now comes with a stiffer chassis and an overall weight reduction of 10 kilos. Acceleration from 0 to 100 in a time of 6.3 seconds versus 7.3 seconds of its predecessor. So it now also comes equipped with the FA24 2.4 litre flat 4 that produces 231 bhp and a flatter top curve between 3 to 5,000 rpm. With the GR86, Toyota offers sports car enthusiasts exactly what they were hoping for, a meaner, faster version of the car that was designed for the race track. We have this mean machine and a whole slew of other race cars on display during our championship so join us from 6 and 7 of August for a live semi-finals and finals. See you soon. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, we've just concluded race one for Group B. And here is our race winner. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for this gentleman who's been waiting for a long time to come into first place, Mr. Chong Kai Chang. How do you feel right now? He was 2019 grand finalist. Uh, he skipped one year and now he's back in action. So what does it feel like to win your first race? Um, it's actually great to be back and especially back um, on stage as well because with the situation that we have over the past few years, um, it's been really tough on a lot of um, people staying at home, not being able to come out. So um, I'm feeling quite excited that we are able to do our live event here again. 
So it seems during the pandemic, you've been doing lots of practice. And who is your biggest challenger for Group B? Well, I, I think if you manage to join, um, to enter semi-finals, right, then you qualify to be one of the best. So you can't look down on any of this competition because they are here for a reason. They are here because they managed to fight um, their way here. You look like you, are, you have a very solid head on your shoulders. Actually, the focus right here is on the first runner-up from last year, Iqbal Suji, and you saw him battling very hard with uh, position number three, Mio Hafiz. But you were cruising right in front, not a worry in the world. So is your biggest challenger yourself? Well, um, actually, I have huge respect to Mio and Iqbal Suji as well, because like you said, they are the grand finalists from last year and the previous years as well. So I know how fast that um, they can be, but um, during the first lap, I actually saw on the map that um, there was some fighting ongoing. So after I saw that I managed to open up a gap, then I just tried to like, pace myself. Don't take too much risk, just bring it home safely. Excellent, what a great, solid head on his shoulders. He's a cool racer. Mr. Chong, good luck for race number two. It's going to be reverse grid, 30 minutes. Prepare yourself, racers. Meanwhile, it's back to our race casters. All right, so there you go. The uh, semi-finals highlight, especially in Group B, race one. This was entertaining, Victor. Oh, yeah, this was a very interesting race to watch, particularly the battle that Iqbal Suji and Mio Hafiz has been having all throughout. I mean, they swapped places uh, one time, but, uh, you know, the whole time, Iqbal has been keeping the pressure going on to Mio, keeping it going for a very, very long time until finally he found uh, the right time, you know, to make the pass there, taking his position away here. Uh, he, he, made, he made that attempt of, of one time before and then finally uh, managed to find a way through by the time he got to the end of Hawthorne after having a brilliant trap uh, through that long, long back straight. But, uh, you know, you have to, have to give a shout out as well to the guys fighting in the midfield here. Shamir in particular, you know, had been uh, battling very hard trying to get himself up in that P5. Almost tasted that position for a little bit until like uh, both Hakim uh, as well as Akiel were able to find a way past him. But the man of the race, though, is this guy, Chong Kai Chang. Got pole position. He led the race from start to finish, built up a massive gap ahead of Iqbal Suji, and therefore it's deserving of the top point spot here after our first race. Yeah, so kalau kita lihat di dalam race result untuk Group B di dalam race yang pertama, Chong Kai Chang yang berada di dalam P yang pertama dengan 25 mata, P kedua untuk Muhammad Iqbal Suji dengan 18 mata, P ketiga untuk Mio Hafiz 15 mata, P keempat untuk Goy Ying 12 mata, P kelima Akil Safi 10 mata, P keenam Muhammad Hakim 8 mata, Fakhrul Syamik P ketujuh 6 mata, P kelapan Putra Azwira dengan 4 mata, P kesembilan Muhammad Juwaidi dengan 2 mata dan terakhir sekali adalah Idzam Ali dengan 1 mata. So this is the race result that is official right now Victor. Yeah, it is. And with Chong Kai Chang having taken the bulk of the points now, uh, Iqbal and Muir not too far behind, especially in race one. Given that they're going to be starting in front of Choi Kai, Chong Kai Chang, uh, it's going to be a battle now to see who can make the massive, massive overtakes on the first lap of this reverse grid race. Because remember what Taj Aima was able to do, you know, when you get an extremely good first lap, you start climbing up the ranks there. It's, you're pretty much going to be staying in a good position for your strategy in the feature race. So whether or not the kind of same kind of thing is going to happen here, I mean, we're talking about these guys who are on par, I would say, with Taj Aima in terms of skill. Maybe not so much in terms of the results that he got from the passing years but nevertheless just like Chong Kai Chang said you cannot discount any one of these drivers nah. even a last place guy nah. <laughs> because they have fought their way to get to this point they fought through the time attack qualifiers they fought their way through the quarterfinals now we're going to be going into race number two here it's um starting in front there gets himself up alongside Juwaidi but no actually he stays in front of Juwaidi here Putra in third place right now tries to find a way to slip past he does overtake Juwaidi around the inside here now gets his help up in the P2. Bit of a toss-up going on in the back of the grid here. We see Muir in fifth place right now. Shamir in sixth. Uh, Shamir right now trying to get around the outside. Iqbal Suji didn't quite make it though. And Iqbal goes up in the seventh. Shamir now tries around the inside through Graham Hill. But still isn't able to get himself ahead of Iqbal quite yet. Iqbal stays in P7. Yeah. Akiel right now is in P6. As they continue to pile on through Surtees. Look at that. Still jostling around for position here. Iqbal Suji now 
out, trying to find a way past Akio Selfie, but unfortunately doesn't quite have the gap in order to build up speed through the draft now, so pretty much he's going to be tucked up behind Akio by the time to get up through Tingle Dell, and there in seventh place he will stay. Wow, satu permulaan yang sangat baik di dalam Group B race yang kedua. Kita lihat Iqbal Suji sekarang ni. Oh. Adakah ini masanya nampaknya beliau memintas juga. Ah, dan terus saja mendapatkan P ke-6 dan nampaknya beliau akan cuba untuk memberikan cabaran terhadap Mior Hafiz yang berada di dalam P ke-5 tetapi in this front there Victor kita lihat Izzam yang masih lagi berada di dalam P yang pertama dan ini dia pertarungan daripada di belakang sebenarnya kita on board bersama dengan Syamir yang berada di dalam P ke-10 cuba untuk memberikan tekanan terhadap Akil Safi pada Akil Safi trying his very best over here, Victor. Yeah, I mean, everyone that was behind him has literally overtaken them, so that's why they're currently sitting in yep. last place here. But uh, Shamir wow. have been trying so hard to fight. Uh, in the meantime, though, I think Muir has just gotten uh, side by side here with Hakim, and Hakim will have an inside going through Druid as well, but Muir overbreaks him, outbreaks him out here. Now the only the exit is going to be important, and Muir stays himself into P5, and Iqbal uses this opportunity now to slip past Hakim in order to come up into P5, so Iqbal, Yet again, finds himself right on the rear bumper of Mior Hafiz. <laughs> this is never ending, Victor. I can tell you for sure, man. So, kita tunggu dah lihat apa yang akan jadi antara pertarungan Mior Hafiz dan juga Iqbal Suji. Battle untuk P4 yang kita boleh mengatakan so far. Dan kita tunggu dah lihat adakah Iqbal Suji ada sahaja peluang di dalam Sleko yang kelima sekarang ni berada di hadapan. Tetapi at the same time, kita kena juga memberikan tumpuan terhadap Go yes, Go Yiging yang sudah pun berada di dalam P8. But right now, Iqbal Suji masih lagi di belakang Mior Hafiz. Is this the moment untuk beliau cuba untuk memintas breaking point yang cukup baik dan menafikan di situ adalah Mior Hafiz yang tidak memberikan beliau segala uh, peluang untuk memintas. But at this moment, Mior Hafiz is just keeping calm and look at how close Iqbal Suji is right behind him. Yeah, but again, Iqbal just wants to stay behind him so he can try to overtake him on the pit straight. And look at that, he's taking a much more aggressive line compared to Mior because he wants to maximize speed on the exit, uh, coming out towards the uh, first turn now. Iqbal Suji is still continuing to trap behind Mio Hafiz, so we can't, hasn't quite found that speed differential yet. But yet again, uh, this is going to be another lap for Iqbal Suji to tuck himself behind Mio, unless he can outbreak him through Druids, but he doesn't seem to be making that move though. But look oh, at that look tree at white this. behind there, and it looks like a little bit of contact, forcing a slowdown there. Wayne Go attempted to try to get past uh, Kai Chang there, it looks like. And Kai Chang unfortunately had to break a little bit, forcing the three cars to slow down a lot and then now it's just open the door now for a three-way battle for p6 wayne go currently is sitting in front there but kai chang is dipping on his heels as it come through graham hill uh, uh akiel selfie uh, somehow imagine to find his way through there it looks like he's actually gotten past hakim who's dropped the place now to get towards p8 but then they're both battling side by side there the p8 and p9 driver here uh trying to oh, see wow. who's Look gonna be the this. first one to get through the turn it looks like hakim is the one who gets through there ahead of Putra. Ya, yeah, Izzam sekarang ni yang nampaknya akan memberikan sedikit pertarungan untuk Putra Azwira yang berada di dalam pick yang pertama masuk ke dalam Sleko yang ke-8. Azwira masih lagi mempertahankan posisi beliau di hadapan dan Izzam still right behind ni. Kita tunggu dah lihat apakah plan daripada Izzam sekarang ni. Azwira on the other side making sure Izzam masih lagi berada di belakang. As we see the gap antara mereka ini adalah 0.6 saat sahaja. Di dalam pick ketiga kita lihat Mohd Juwaidi naik juga nampaknya dan P keempat untuk Mio Rafis tiada perubahan di dalam pertarungan antara mereka bersama dengan Iqbal Suji di dalam P ke-5 dan ini dia kita on board oh, Iqbal Suji datang saja daripada belakang ada sedikit langgaran daripada bumper di situ but he's still keeping calm the Victor dan Mio Rafis cuba untuk masuk ke dalam garisan ke dalam tetapi dinafikan oleh Mohd Juwaidi di dalam P yang ketiga cuba untuk mencari ruang kiri dan ke kanan but both sides are well shot right now Victor well one thing I I didn't quite consider is that all that bumping that uh, yeah. Iqbal Suji has been doing onto Muir has actually been drafting him quite well, so it's allowing him to fight alongside Juwaidi. Unfortunately, he couldn't quite find the speed through Surtees right there, so he still stays in P4. But yet again, Iqbal giving this gentle nudge on the back of Muir actually yeah, helps uh, Muir a little bit here because it, it does give him the extra speed boost. Now, granted, oh, yes. Iqbal is a lot faster, so now he's going to try to use his opportunity here. Muir finding a way past Juwaidi. Iqbal is going to try surely to follow behind there, but no, he doesn't quite get through. Juwaidi is going to try to fight back here, but they will end up side by side to get through Dingle.
angle down. So Iqbal has the insight now, and he has Mio Hafiz to drop off of here, coming off of this turn. So I think by the time he gets through, Iqbal is already three tens, no, four tens ahead of Muhammad Juwaidi. Yeah, satu gerakan yang sangat baik daripada Mio Hafiz sekarang ni, yang sudah pun naik ke P yang ketiga. Iqbal Suji di dalam P keempat nampaknya dan P kelima untuk Muhammad Juwaidi. So let's see this battle. Apakah keputusan? Nampaknya Iqbal Suji akan masuk ke dalam pit. That's an early pit from him. Dan kita memberikan fokus terhadap Mior Hafiz yang berada di dalam P ketiga. That's going to be interesting. It'll just like touch Aiman in the, in the uh, Group A race 2. He's going to be going for the undercut here. Uh, that's Iqbal Suji. So it's going to be an interesting time now, especially for those guys who are in front here because now that they know that he's fired off that first shot in this uh, strategic war here, now it's going to be a matter of how these guys maintain their tires. So the thing is that for this uh, specific feature race here, the balloting is uh, quite a lot different compared to Group B because even though the, uh, the fuel is at one time the simulation rate, so there's not going to be a lot of fuel burn in this race, tires are going to be wearing out four times faster than normal here. So maybe that might be the cue for Iqbal Suji to just go ahead, swap out to a soft set of tires and then try to maintain this and uh, hopefully overtake a lot of these other guys in front when they have to come in to take the mandatory pit stop. Yeah, so that is the uh, pit stop strategy yang kita boleh lihat yang uh, diterangkan oleh Victor Gas. So at this moment, kita on board bersama dengan Mohamad uh, Syamir sebenarnya. Tapi kita memberikan tumpuan terus kepada Izzam yang berada di dalam P kedua. Putra Azbira masih lagi berada di dalam P yang pertama. Kita akan terus ke dalam Seleko yang ke-9 dengan 22 minit saja yang berpaki di dalam race yang kedua untuk Group B semifinal Toyota Gazoo Racing Velocity Esports Championship 2022. And let's see if there is going to be anyone going into the pits there, Victor. Well, the one thing that's so interesting watching uh, this battle between Azwira and Idzam is that Azwira is a lot faster in the pit straight compared to Idzam. Like, yeah. literally, I think he's getting a way better exit out of the Jim Clark curve, and that's uh, allowing Azwira plenty of comfortable room and comfortable speed in order to keep himself ahead of Idzam by the time they get to the first turn. So Idzam, in the meantime, though, dropping quite far behind Azwira. I think he might have used up a lot of the performance in his tires now, and is struggling as a result. You can see that his... Uh, front and uh, rear lefts are already quite well worn out compared to his right hand side tires and that's just an indication of like how how much uh, you know uh, right hand turning had to do especially in this uh, sector here where you literally fling yourself into this turn at 170 kilometers per hour I mean you can imagine the stress that puts on your tires I mean you're quite frankly even the Vios cars they literally top up their max speed at 170 and these cars are doing that but on the corners on the corners man so Oh, that's a lot, a lot of things that will be happening around. But right now, kita akan teruskan dengan perlumbaan di dalam race yang kedua. So, Idzam masih lagi berada di lampi kedua. Nampaknya beliau ter terkeluar sedikit daripada kereksan. Hopefully, it does not affect his timing at this moment. Dan kita bersama dengan... Uh, Lumba yang memenangi race yang pertama iaitu Chong Kai Chan dan bagaimana beliau ke oh, Mior akan masuk ke dalam pit sekarang ni and the one that is staying out right now is going to be Chong Kai Chan and the fastest man on this lap so far man it is going to be Putra Zwira clocking at 1.29.5 507. Yeah, but that could also be because uh, he basically uh, right now having run this stint for quite a while has already got himself a much lighter car and the fact that he's uh, beating Idza when it comes to the top line speed on the main straight tells me that uh, you know, he's, he has a lot of uh, speed in that car still remaining. So I think Azwira probably is going for the longer, longer first stint here. Uh, it's interesting that Mior has decided to take uh, this turn now to pit. He was on the medium tires, it looks like, and then uh, I'm not sure what tires he's going to be coming out. Hopefully, we'll be able to find out soon. Iqbal Suji, in the meantime, has already made up a place there, having gotten past uh, Mior Hafiz, who was in the pits. So that strategy has already worked out for one. Uh, position so far. Can he catch some more though? Because look at that. He's already catching up to where Hakim and Shamir is. And I don't know. I don't think either of these guys have pitted either. So Iqbal could be potentially, uh, you know, getting himself into the mix of this sixth place battle here. Uh, even after he's already completed his first mandatory pit stop. Yeah, dan uh, that is what we can. Oh, oh look at that, that. Iqbal Suji <laughs> datang daripada mana di, di situ nampaknya. And he has right now got into P7. Iqbal Suji with a surprise. 
And uh, man, I'm very sure Shami did not saw that coming, man. Uh, I uh, this that coming is just <laughs> perfect, perfect from Iqbal Suji. And let's see if he's able to aim on Hakim right now, who is on P6 at this oh, moment. Iqbal Suji on the outside, and he got it into P4 right now, man. And let's see if Hakim is able to hold on to the next turn right now. Nope. But nope, it's <laughs> not going to be happening. It's not happening anytime soon. Iqbal Suji on P4. Oh, that's crazy. I mean, again, how did he got the speed? <laughs> I mean, for one, he has pressure tires. He did. Uh, yeah, or he, uh, he did kind of like pit uh, a lot earlier, so the undercut has worked out so, so well for Iqbal Suji now. And that might be, uh, you know, something for these drivers, uh, the rest of the drivers here to think about. We're only about 11 minutes into this race, so they can certainly uh, try to undercut as well, unless their strategies literally go long, unless their strategy literally requires them to keep uh, those tires going until the 15th minute or so, and then only decide when they want to try to pit in once the tires uh, already gave the, up the ghost. But with Iqbal Suji absolutely blistering his way out of the field, I think it might be high time for these drivers to consider the undercut because with the uh, tire simulation rate being at four times, you know, the performance isn't going to last. And if the undercut is this powerful, maybe, just maybe, it might be time oh. for a lot of these drivers to take the pits. Oh, oh Shamir, that's looking very, very close there. But Hakim also made a bit of a mistake there that forced Shamir to react. But what a reaction that was because Shamir still managed to keep his head so far and keep himself ahead of Mior Hafiz. But now that Hafiz has a draft now, uh, coming towards the final turn, I think Mior might be thinking of making a move around the outside of Clark Curve, and he has a draft of Hakim to hop off up as well, if he manages to make it, and he looks like he does, because it looks like Hakim goes into the pit, pit lane, that forced Shami to slow down a little bit, and that now gives Mior Hafiz fourth position in race number two. Ah, this guy is climbing slower and slower there, so it's the top of the Mior Hafiz, who is now in the P yang keempat. Dan sekarang beliau cuba untuk mengejar Iqbal Suji dan Syamir nampaknya ketinggalan di, di belakang dengan kosong poin lima saat at this moment. But let's see if that is going to be any sorts of drastic changes di dalam uh, posisi yang atas sekarang ini. I'm really surprised to see Azwiran also eat some still holding the same position from just now, Victor. And Iqbal Suji on the other side coming closer. But right now, all focus on the man right now, Kai Chang who is trying to get into P5. This is the battle for P5. And let's see if he has any sort of advantage going up against Shami as we are going into turn number five downhill right now. And let's see, he's having the outside right now. And he just could not close it in. Shami doing absolutely perfect, but Kai Chang oh. on the inside. Is this the moment for him to make a move? But no, Shami still denies the opportunity right now. Yeah, I mean, the thing was Kai Chang was catching up to Shamir so, so much, but then they both had to break at the same time as soon as they entered uh, Dingle Dell. So that already makes it extra hard because, you know, there's only a very short window of opportunity there in that breaking zone. So very much not a, a overtaking place at all. So Kai Chang, though, has done quite well. He's going to try to go a little bit wider around the outside here, but I think Shamir is going to be going into the pits as Kai Chang overtakes him for P5 now. So now he's only got Mio Hafiz ahead of him. 2.5 seconds to think about here because there's no one else left for him to battle at this point. Ah, uh, man. This is going to be a long, long gap between all of the other races especially. And we're on board right now. He's still with Kai Chang who is the uh, 28 years old driver right now. He has uh, got the second place back in Michelin Virtual Race Series 2021. And right now he is on a battle to get himself the hands on the trophy or the championship today, which is going to be for the Toyota Gazoo Racing Velocity Esports Championship 2022. This man has an aim, and let's see if he's able to achieve that in this race. Well, if he aims to catch up the Mio, he better not understeer the way he did through Surtees <laughs> there, because that's going to do a number of your tires, especially when we still have half the race to go here, ladies and gentlemen. We're still 15 minutes away from seeing the checkered flag in race two, and this boy is going to be a long one here for these guys. I mean, the field is very much spread out. You can see from the mini-map that the gaps between these drivers are very, very huge. There's practically not a lot of drafting to happen here, except for maybe a couple of guys. I think that might be a way Go and Juwaidi, who are battling a little bit uh, behind yeah. uh, Kai Chang at the moment. But uh, for Kai Chang, you know, he still has a long way to go before he catches up to Mior's slipstream. So, pretty much has to rely on setting fast, consistent laps. But the last one being a 130 isn't quite setting the timing charts ablaze here. Let's hope his 10th lap is a little bit better as he comes across the line now. He's only set up to 129, so he is improving. He's getting his timings up there, but he needs to be uh, 129. 
consistently here. Oh, it's a penalty. He wants to have a chance uh, to catch up to Iqbal. Uh, Wayne Go has caught a 0.4 seconds penalty. Again, this is an automatically applied penalty, which means that either uh, he had caused a, a bad collision or he may have cut uh, track limits here. So whichever the case, that's going to hand uh, a very healthy lead to Juwaidi because as uh, soon as Wayne Go is going to be forced to take that penalty, he's going to be forced to slow down or rather his car will automatically slow down and Juwaidi will definitely have an opportunity now to pass. Yeah, that's going to be a good opportunity, especially for Juwaidi at this moment. So itu dia kita bersama dengan Go Ying yang kini berada di dalam peak uh, enam dan kita on board bersama dengan Muhammad Juwaidi yang akan mendapatkan advantage untuk memintas Go Ying. But at this moment, kita akan teruskan di dalam Sleko yang kelima dan on the other side, Victor, this race, especially once the gap is opened up, uh, it's all about who is going to close down the gaps in, in less than 13 minutes right now. Yeah, I want to see whether or not Akiel will be able to take advantage as well once Akiel, uh, right? Wengo has, uh, has to take his penalty here. Because even, uh, even though Juwaidi, I think, is pretty much in that position to overtake him, but uh, Akiel also is very, falling very closely behind Juwaidi. So I think by the time Juwaidi makes his move, Akiel can surely follow him behind. Uh, Wengo comes around to the, uh, to the final corner here. It looks like he still has a uh, 0.4 second penalty, but he's actually pulled a little bit of a significant lead ahead of Whitey now up to one second. So that's actually given him uh, quite a margin here to work with here to slowly uh, edge away at that penalty, which is brought down to 0.3%. And this is one way you can pretty much uh, reduce the the damaging effects of that penalty without uh, necessarily forcing a, a long slowdown period, just basically by lifting off a more or rather breaking a little bit harder to some of these corners here, but doing it gradually so that you slowly whittle down the penalty, but without uh, conceding the full like uh, penalty length there. So as a result, I think Wayne Go has done uh, extremely That's well here yeah. Yeah, to get that gap going there and to now finally uh, have the breathing room to etch away that penalty and hopefully uh, not allow JYD to take over his place. Yeah, sama seperti apa Victor mengatakan satu aksi yang cukup menarik daripada Kai Chang sekarang ni. Tetapi kita on board bersama dengan top 3 racer iaitu Iqbal Suji yang berada di dalam P yang ketiga nampaknya beliau pun sudah berada di dalam posisi yang cukup baik. Tetapi sekarang ni misinya adalah untuk mengejar Ah, uh, oh, he's not going to be chasing him anymore. He's going to go into the pits there. So, yeah. jadi Iqbal Suji akan teruskan dengan P yang kedua. Has Putra Zubira pitted them, Victor? Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think so, I right? Think yeah. So. I mean, given the fact that Iqbal is literally seven seconds behind already, I mean, look at the power of the undercut. I mean, seriously, uh, Iqbal pitted at what, six minute mark? And then yep. he's already made up all, virtually all of the places that he lost uh, before he went to the pits. So now that he's behind Azwira, all it takes is Azwira to go into the pit lane and Iqbal will inherit the lead. Uh, so uh, Mior now being 4.7 seconds is not really in that range to battle Iqbal for the lead here. So I fear for the next 11 minutes, it's going to be Iqbal having his own version of a Saturday drive. No. <laughs> You can say that again, Da Victor. This man has been phenomenal. So itu dia Iqbal Suji sekarang ni yang berada di dalam P yang kedua. And once Azwira pits, I think most definitely is going to be in P1. But ini dia pertarungan untuk P yang ketujuh. Akil Safi masih lagi memegang di hadapan dan diikuti oleh Muhammad Juwaidi bersama dengan Fakul Shamir. And let's see if there's going to be any sorts of changes. Adakah kita akan lihat attacking yang akan dilakukan oleh mana-mana pelumba di dalam battle ini? As far kita lihat Muhammad Juwaidi masih lagi cuba untuk mengejar dan juga menafikan gerakan-gerakan daripada Muhammad Shamir. But Shamir right now trying to close the gap as well and putting on more pressure on Muhammad Juwaidi. I think... Go has just got another penalty again. Oh, man. But then again, how many he, penalties are we going to have today? Uh, as, many, as many as we need, I think. <laughs> but for Wayne Go, no, it's only a 0 0.1 second, so he's already whittled it down quite a bit uh, since we saw it earlier yeah. on. So that's not going to have too much of an effect because he has a healthy, healthy gap to Akiel right now. But Akiel has got to watch his rearview mirrors very closely because this is a three way battle right now. And I think he's going to be carrying this next 10 minutes of the race here because at this stage, I think uh, all these drivers here i think they've already taken the pit stop maybe so that means that they're going to try to battle it out here for the rest of this race and boy oh boy i mean for juwaidi he did lose a place uh, because he was falling behind goal earlier on i think and that 
P7, so Akiel has already overtaken him. So the Whitey now, if anything else, is trying to regain his old position here. But uh, nevertheless, as we ride aboard with Kai Chang, he won the first race. Currently now, he's sitting P4 just out of the podium place here with Mio Hafiz for company in front in 1.8 seconds away on the track. And uh, right now, I mean, for Kai Chang in particular, given that he's already won that first race, even finishing fourth here, I think it's already giving him good chances of getting that grand finals. But uh, surely, he, he would definitely relish it a little bit more if he can actually find a way to battle with Mio here for third place. Ya, yeah, jadi tuan-tuan dan puan, nampaknya lebih kurang kita mempunyai 9 minit saja yang berbaki di dalam race untuk uh, race yang kedua di dalam Group B Semifinals dan masih lagi kita lihat Iqbal Suci yang berada di dalam P yang pertama diikuti oleh Mior Hafiz di dalam P kedua dan P ketiga sekarang ini adalah Kai Chang and I'm really looking forward to this battle right now but at this moment, the battle is on for P7 Oh, oh Akil! Someone Akil! Nampaknya Akil terkeluar Dan what happened to Akil over there if you can get the replace? I think he just uh, went a little bit wide there, Victor. I think he just went wide. He, he went, went wide, yeah. Wide and into the sand trap. Oh, actually, oh it was a battle defend. there, Victor. He tried to defend, but unfortunately moving that suddenly oh, in the breaking zone there unsettled his that's car. Then sent his car straight into the sand trap. So that's so bad for Akiel because now, by the time he gets back on track, he is in last place. Oh, that's the worst place to be in there, especially after you're oh, battling so hard. I mean, he was in seventh place there ahead of GYD. Now now JYD is in that seventh place ahead of Jamir. Yeah, not the master plan from uh, the man on P10 at this moment, but it seems like it's going all going to plan for Iqbal Suji in P1 right now. Dan nampaknya ada tujuh minit saja yang berbaki dan Iqbal Suji kini memegang P yang pertama di dalam musim lepas beliau menghabiskan race ini di dalam P yang kedua. Can this be his season? That is the biggest question that is among everyone right now dan Kai Chang nampaknya ada sedikit pertarungan sama dengan Azwira yang berada di dalam P ketiga adakah kita akan lihat attacking move yang akan dilakukan oleh Kai Chang di dalam Sleko yang ke-9 yang naik ke atas saja dan bagaimana dengan Azwira sekarang ni cuba untuk menafikan gerakan di dalam Sleko yang pertama dan nampaknya Kai Chang berada di dalam garisan ke dalam dan memintas juga Azwira mengambil P ketiga Azwira di dalam P keempat Man, Kai Chang right now is putting on a show for us. Consider this fact that Azwira had just only came out of the pits just the last lap. And Kai Chang, even with tires this worn out here, continues to find the speed somehow on that pit straight and passes the Azwira on those fresher tires. So, I mean, it could be the weight differential of, again. Uh, Kai Chang, I think, has uh, still uh, already pit up a quite a lot earlier on compared to Putra. So, Azwira Wira it's may have been a bit of a disadvantage, but the fact that the fact still is that uh, Zwira has the better tires and still Kai Chang can find the speed. So wow, that's an amazing pass now, and that's gonna put Kai Chang straight up into the podium here. Not quite a battle he was hoping for Mior, but a battle nevertheless to get himself up onto the podium. Yeah, fantastic racing from this man, especially you seeing him from the race one and now in race two as well. He's trying to prove a point over here, and I'm very sure. It's going to be a long way battle for him, but him being in this P3 is going to be absolutely good as well. But Putra Zwira sekarang ni, cuba untuk mengikuti Kai Chang. But then, looking at the gap there, Victor, 0.7, that's quite far there. It's and really we know with the speed of Kai Chang when he gets onto straight, so yeah, look at that. It's widening, yeah. It's widening. It's widening. Widening on the pit straight. Kai Chang is carrying so much speed. So much speed, yeah. I think it's just, you know, down to the way you attack the final corner. You know, you want to have that uh, very fast exit out, especially when you're coming uh, onto like a, a long straight after like a very technical corner. And Clark Curve is definitely one of the most trickiest kind of like last corners I've ever seen in any kind of circuit because not only had to contend with like uh, the slightly weird uh, entry because because it uh, technically is part of like a multi configuration that's available for Brands Hatch, and Clark Curve just uh, you know eases itself into like the indie layout of uh, Brands Hatch, which is shorter layout of the track. So that creates a bit of a weird sort of bump or hump they had to get over if you're on a racing line. 
but the other thing as well is that the Clark curve itself is not straightforward. It's not like a very consistent right-hand turn. It kind of like bends and kinks a little bit in the middle yep. of the turn. So uh, practically, you're just left with like, okay, you have this much track, and uh, you know the pit straight. You know it's literally right after this corner. So uh, everything all banks on the way you handle the entry and how you uh, manage the exit of the corner and what you want to achieve with exit. It's maximum top speed because once you are able to get that fast exit out, you guarantee to have to carry that speed all the way through the main straight. As you can see, this that's the way Kai Chan's doing it. You know, getting all the way around that, the outside uh, uh, once he got to the exit of Clark Curve and then just gunning it through that uh, through the main straight, trying to keep a line as straight as possible through this like quote unquote straight. Which if you notice, you know, especially on the cameras here, you can see it's actually a bit cambered and also slightly bending to the uh, to the right. Yeah. So even the straight is not that straightforward on this uh, very, very iconic track. Yeah, talking about speed, nampaknya Kai Chang sekarang ini mempunyai satu speed yang cukup baik, tetapi all eyes on this man, itu Iqbal Suji yang kini berada di dalam B yang pertama. Dan uh, can this be his season? He looking pretty much calm over there. Nampaknya beliau keluar dengan uh, satu aksi yang cukup baik yang boleh didangkan kepada semua yang menonton live stream ini ataupun secara langsung di one utama sekarang ini. But man, this guy has a long, long shot to go at this moment. But absolutely phenomenal performance from Iqbal Suji so far. I mean, absolute, like, absolutely uh, perfect strategy as well. I mean, just like Taj Ayman, he harnessed the power of the undercut in order to basically, um, basically all he did is just pit way earlier than everyone else, get himself uh, up to speed already on his second stint and pretty much just uh, make up positions as people in front of him slowly had to take their mandatory pit stop one by one. And once that shuffle is already the way through, Iqbal just literally bubbles his way to the top. And with the six second gap here and with all no, two, three minutes, uh, less than three minutes remaining here, I mean, for Iqbal Suji, all he needs to do is just, you know, drive consistently. Don't have to push too hard anymore. You're not not facing any more pressure, especially from the back now. Uh, with a six second gap, you could even uh, let off the gas a little bit at certain points and still uh, maintain a healthy lead. So, you know, at this point, especially with the tires already be being, being this worn out, he doesn't need to fight so hard anymore. It, it, basically, that's the power of having the perfect strategy for the race. You know, if your strategy works out very, very well, you find that, yeah, you actually don't need to exert too much effort during the actual race itself because practically the strategy does all of that overtaking just for you. Oh, perfect, man. Absolutely. So right now, we're on board right now with the uh, Muhammad Hakim actually, who is on P9. So kita tunggu dah lihat bagaimana gerakan beliau terhadap Akil Safi. I think Akil Safi had a really good battle di dalam P7 tadi, Victor. Until that that spin, he just came off. Yeah, he just yeah. ran off the track and he got pressured that tekanan yang terlalu tinggi terhadap beliau and he just spun off on got into P10 and now he is trying to slowly climb back and right now he's on P8 pretty decent enough and let's see if he's able to get into uh, P8 maybe let's see I mean it's pretty all, much open yeah especially after like a spill like that it's all damage limitation here so uh, whatever places he's able to maintain he better just stay there he better there. stay eh? he better <laughs> stay there especially with one minute left but, uh, you know, it's also a bit unfortunate, or rather, I would say a bit self-inflicted on his part, you know, uh, regarding the mistake. Because on the one hand, you know, he was defending, you know, he uh, there was a potential for a move there, I think that uh, I think was uh, maybe Shamir or someone who was uh, trying to make that move onto him and then force him uh, to kind of like make a very late move, you know, to defend. And that unfortunately uh, allowed, uh, rather, uh, when he made that move, he just touched the grass a little bit. And unfortunately, uh, when you're driving a racing car at top speed, you know, at the edge of your grip, you know, touching the grass, not exactly the best of plans, you know, <laughs> because uh, as you saw, uh, Akiel, immediately that sent him out of control straight into the sand trap, losing out those positions and potentially losing out on uh, a chance to get into the grand finals. Yeah, itulah apa yang yang kita lihat tadi lah, Victor. Kan? Uh, it's such a shame for him, but right now 
is trying to get back into the race and getting back into a better position daripada P10. So sekarang nampaknya kita mempunyai 12 ataupun we can say we are coming to the checkered flags already and all eyes is on this man Iqbal Suji the uh, 24 years old this man is already enjoying it so far as he's coming down into the last turn turn number 9 so in India all eyes on this man with a phenomenal performance and that is Iqbal Suji finishing this race in style P1 for the man what a race it has been and Miohaf is on P2 oh hopefully you don't hit him <laughs> and Kai Chang with another performance as well on P3 Wow. Fantastic racing today, Victor. I'm wow. enjoying this, man. What an amazing race. I mean, the fact that Kai Cha managed to fight his way back up onto the podium here, combined with his first race win, that's certainly going to give him a, a very smooth ride to the grand finals, I think. But uh, let's see how Akil does. He was in uh, eighth place early on in that battle with Hakim. He stays in eighth place. It comes across the line, so damage limited here. And he's feeling a little bit happy there, especially <laughs> when things could have been so much so much worse for him, but oh, Juwaidi, he's in 10th place at the moment and only just about into the final corner here. What happened to his race? At one point, he was literally battling with amongst the best in the midfield here, but it's dropped all the way down to the rear, and unfortunately, will only be earning a single solitary point here in race number two. Yeah, so nampaknya tamat perlumbaan di dalam race yang kedua, Group B semifinals. Dan satu pertarungan yang sangat baik dan sangat-sangat menarik kalau kita lihat segala aksi-aksi yang berlaku di atas litas mentah tadi. Especially the battle between Iqbal Suji dan juga Mio Muhammad Hafiz. And also the rest of the other races as well. Kita juga dapat sedikit pertarungan yang sangat baik daripada uh, Muhammad Juwaidi dan juga Akil Safwi. Until we saw Akil spinning it off and coming, dropping into P10. And we saw lots of other amazing stuff as well. But Victor, overall, I am really enjoying this. And what a fantastic racing it has been. Oh, yeah. It was an amazing race that we saw here. I mean, just like with the Group A, I mean, Group B is just as competitive. You know, you, you see uh, uh, Iqbal being uh, one of the most uh, targeted guys, let's put it that way. You know, getting <laughs> second runner up last <laughs> year. That, huh? Yeah, <laughs> second runner up from last year means that, you know, he's already got a huge target pain in his back coming into this season. Uh, Muir especially, putting some <laughs> mean faces to the camera there. And yeah, Muir definitely is gunning for that, you know. Yeah. Coming into this uh, championship here, he wants to, you know, uh, just like Uzair, you know, who, who won the first championship, he wants to come back here to prove that he still has has it even though he is already in his 30s here he can still fight it with you know these 20 somethings he can still uh, he still has the skills in Gran Turismo uh, to prove that he deserves to be uh, in the grand finals here so uh, nevertheless with those kind of performance here I think uh, Mio definitely stands a good chance but after all we still have two more races we still have three and four it's only after that fourth race that we will be tabulating the entirety of the points here in order to determine who will be the top five for each group so it's not quite over yet even after the second race here the question of who gets in the grand finals <laughs> that's still up in the air oh it's definitely it's very much open actually who's going to go into the grand finals we're just done with race one and race two for each groups we'll be going for the race three and race four uh, later on once everything is pretty much done but one thing for sure is that man it's going to be a very interesting battle, especially I'm looking forward for race three and race four. That is what gonna be a conclusion for all of these races. You can say that this is almost at the at the uh, mid of this entire show. So right now, you gotta be 100% serious. You don't wanna be making mistakes. I mean, you're already warmed up, I think. After yeah. having raced like two races already, I mean, at this point now, I mean, the Swayman drivers already know what to expect from their rivals inside the group itself. And hopefully by the time we get to race three and four, things will heat up even more because then at that point things are actually on the line yeah you heard that right so right now we'll be having the interviews with the races of course from group b what a race it has been i hope nas asked lots of interesting questions so nas over to you my man take it away Thank you very much, Mr. Victor Cax and Mr. Matthews Isaac. Yeah, what a wonderful, wonderful race one and two. And here we are with the first runner up from last year, Mr. Iqbal Suji. Now we're going to talk about his strategy. Jadi Iqbal, tadi apa saya nampak kan? Awak mula dengan medium tyres, bawa mula dari belakang. Lepas tu awak masuk pit punya laju. 
Orang semua tengah menggelabar tiba-tiba Eh apa saya Suci masuk dulu kan Jadi apa strategi kamu di sana Ah, uh, So tadi yang uh, interesting ya pasal This particular car uh, dengan track ni Is that medium is a better starting tyre daripada soft Ah, uh, Sebab if you see kan Those yang starting on soft They might be quick over a lap But masa start tu They are too much grip The wheels wouldn't spin And they bog down I'm on the medium The car, the, the tyres can spin And uh, I was able to show the line uh, Memang depan tu Tetik lah I see So that was his tactic from the start But the fast pit stop And I noticed you changed to soft tyres And towards the end of the race You were slipping and sliding Shoo 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 macam tu So was that expected to happen? Uh, I know the soft can run for 15 laps But I pitted at lap 4 So I'm not sure about the extra lap But seeing the gap keeps extending I'm as well I'm just gonna have fun Ah, so that was that. It was a bit of a gamble as well, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Especially with the traffic and all. Ah, very good. So that is the difference between experience and the rest of them who've just uh, wetting their ears in e-racing. This is what experience gets you. So, I saw you having a big battle with Mio Hafiz throughout the two races, and uh, is he your strongest competitor for Group B? Um, for now, um, it's hard to say. Because uh, I believe there's a few more people in Group B that deserves uh, like quite a uh, good recognition as well. Mm -hmm. Mio's pace is good. I think was Kai Chang also uh, pace is very good. So um, we'll see. Uh, maybe there's a lot more that I should be expecting. Absolutely. We look at the surprise package. Mr. Chong Kita, who actually won the first race and coming in at third. So he's looking at you, Iqbal. He's looking at you. Best of luck for race three and race four, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, we've just concluded race one and two of Group B. So now, we're going to switch over to this side and I'm going to speak to another driver who's been making waves for race one and two. So right now, I am coming over to Inche Mio Hafiz. He's the oldest competitor for Group B. Jangan, jangan, jangan menggelabah, jangan menggelabah. Walaupun umur, umur tak menjadi faktor untuk e-racing, betul tak? Betul, betul, betul. Jadi kat sini kita nampak race 1 and 2 anda sangat konsisten. Jadi kalau lawan anda adalah Encik Chong Kai Ching kita di sini, did you expect that to happen? Um, yeah, Chong Kai Ching a very consistent driver. So, dia sangat handal, um, <laughs> dia sangat memberi tumpuan, so I am very respect to him. Rasa tercabar lah macam tu? Ya, yeah, ya yeah, tercabar. Tapi, uh, <laughs> tapi kita nampak macam Iqbal Suji yang mempunyai strategi yang lebih superior. Kalau kita nampak uh, sprinting, mungkin semua akan sama saja. Tapi bila masuk race management, bila masuk endurance, nampaknya Iqbal Suji menjadi lawan ketat. Adakah kami yang setuju? Ya, yeah, betul setuju. Um, Iqbal Suji adalah um, very consistent driver. Dia boleh manage um, uh, um, apa, pace walaupun uh, tayarway dia um, agak agak uh, kurang. Agak botak sebenarnya. Ah, uh, Agak botak. Botak seperti? Botak seperti bukan saya, bukan awak, kita dua ada rambut. Tapi saya faham. Soft tyres yang digunakan dan di pit awal. Jadi nampaknya dia botak. Last 2-3 laps tu. Ii, macam tu. Adakah anda berani untuk melakukan strategi seperti itu? Um, berani sebenarnya. Uh, ya, yeah, betul. Sekarang cakap sedang lah. Eh. Dah habis rey boleh lah. Eh. So, um, ya. Yeah, saya suka dengan um, cabaran seperti itu. Uh, um, tayar botak. So, um, ya. Yeah, I love um, management, um, apa? management uh, management of risk. Actually, management risk is very important, especially as the race uh, becomes longer and longer as time goes by untuk race 3 dan 4 kan. Jadi anda sebagai grand finalist last year dan kali ini mencuba sekali lagi, adakah anda membawa suatu feel atau strategi yang berbeza? Um, ya, yeah, um, kita akan tunggu dan lihat uh, di race yang ketiga dan keempat sebentar lagi. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Oh, tu tunggu saja, tak nak bagi tahu apa-apa. Tunggu je lah. Tunggu je lah. Alah, ingat peminat-peminat kat luar sana nak tahu apa perbaruan yang dibawa oleh Mio ni. Mio seorang yang veteran dikira kalau kita cerita pasal Velocity Championship ni. Okay Mio, tahniah kita ucapkan. Well done on race 1 and race 2. Good luck for race 3 and 4. Alright? Ada peminat? Ada ada cakap, uh, ada apa-apa pesan untuk peminat-peminat? Uh, pada peminat-peminat, saya ada peminat lah. Ada, tadi kat sana ada woo 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 begitu. Ah, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, kepada semua peminat, terima kasih banyak. <laughs>
dia macam tak percaya ada peminat dia tak ada peminat kat sana tengok wuh 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 semua memuji sokong dengan kepada Mia Hafiz sokong kepada Mia Hafiz apa tu okey so semoga menjadi perangsang untuk anda untuk race ketiga dan keempat nanti alright ladies and gentlemen we've concluded race 1 and race 2 of group B so that means group A is settled group B is settled and now we go to race 3 and 4 that's coming up after the break but meanwhile let's wrap up the highlights with Mr Victor Cax as well as Matthew Isaac all right, I mean, <laughs> what a fantastic interview we had. But yeah. let's have a look on the highlights for semi-finals. Group B, race two, lots of actions and drama that happen on the track, especially both of these right now. Mio Hafiz and also uh, Iqbal Suji. We saw Kai Chang from P8, man. He finished all the way to P3. I mean, you can take it over from here, man. What yeah. actually happened over here? I mean, again, uh, Kai Chang actually started literally at the back and was making up those places he went along. And, slowly but surely made himself back up into the podium here which is going to be crucial for his points. Mio Hafiz though had been had to battle pretty pretty hard I mean him and Iqbal Suji uh, had to uh, fight two and deal for every single position that it went up and given that those two drivers were extremely fast it was kind of expected to see them uh, climb up the board uh, pretty quickly but uh, what I didn't expect to see was that you know by the end of everything that Iqbal Suji chose to go on a very very uh, a very brilliant strategy strategy here again you know starting on the medium tires just like you mentioned in the interview there that was a very crucial thing for him because that allowed him to maximize his uh, race start here and you know using the soft tires uh, to go for the longer stint means that he will have on average you know the lap time to really uh, keep himself in that lead uh, while at the same time you know not really uh, losing too much in terms of the compound so, yep, so that is the end of the highlights that we saw from the race. But right now, let's have a look on the race results for Group B. So, on P1, it's going to be Mohamed Iqbal Suji carrying 25 points. P2 is going to be Mio Hafiz with 18 points. P3 is going to be Chong Kai Chang, 15 points. P4, Putra Azwira, 12 points. P5 is going to be Izam Ali on 10 points. P6 is going to be Fakhlu Shame on 8 points, P7, Gorgi Ying, 6 points, P8, Akil Safi with 4 points, P9 is going to be Mohamed Hakim, Bin Tuaimi, 2 points, and last but not least is going to be Mohamed Juwaidi on P10 with only 1 point. That is the race results there, Victor. Yeah, his result uh, of the points distributed after race number 2, what I'm most curious of is going to be the overall result which we'll be seeing on screen very, very soon. Can't wait to see how this is going to turn oh, out. Iqbal is going to be taking the top spot here at the end of two races with 43 points. Chong, Chong Kai Chang just behind him by three points here at 40. Uh, and then followed by a big, big gap. Seven points between Chong Kai Chang and Muir Muhammad Hafiz in third place there. Man, I mean, top two is definitely very close, but uh, Muir coming in with 33 points there puts himself very comfortably ahead of uh, Wayne Go Yi Ying, ahead of Putra Azwira. So this is, uh, you know, a very top uh, top heavy kind of group here compared to group A because uh, I think when it compared to group A the gap uh, on average between you know first a second third fourth I think a little bit more evenly spread out than this one I mean Chong Kai Chang and Iqbal I expect they're gonna be battling very very hard in race three and four for this group lead yeah this is what I say just now there Victor I mean race three and race four is gonna be super interesting to watch so I'm really looking forward to it how things are going to be coming out in the end but right now I guess that is the overall results we already saw the rest of the other results especially from Group B right now the only thing that is waiting is going to be race 3 and race 4 that will be coming up later on but before that we're going to be going on with Nas so Nas my brother take it away my man thank you very much have I told you guys you are doing an awesome job as commentators Victor and Matthews oh my goodness gracious me and of course one of the Tama right here is filling up as we head towards lunchtime ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for being here this is season five of Toyota Gazoo Racing Velocity Championship 2022 so we're gonna take a quick break here we've just concluded race one and race two for both groups of semi-finalists group A and group B looks like it's following the script so far our top two drivers Taj Ayman as well as Iqbal Suji 
topping their groups respectively. Will there be any changes? Well, in race three and four, we're going to be changing courses, we'll be changing cars, and it's all about experience and race management. And we'll take a look at who will be making themselves available for the grand finals. I'm Naz Rahman. Don't forget, guys, for those of you guys who are thinking of coming down to Wanutama to catch the action live, we've got a lucky draw happening uh, right here at Wanutama. So come on down for a chance to win uh, an Apple iPhone 13 mini. We've got an uh, Apple Watch uh, as well as some other prizes as well up for grabs. Try our time attack, beat the time that's set by the Toyota Gazoo Racing Ambassador and win some exclusive prizes. So come on down to Wanutama, Centre Court, All Wing. I'm Naz Rahman. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, it's race 3 and race 4. Stay tuned at 3.30pm. <laughs>